What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome on in to our MLS Club and Country Watch Along show. Um, it has been a crazy day of Group F action, and that continues with Canada and Croatia facing off. I am Susanna Collins, joined by a rock star crew today. Um, of course, as always, one of my, my favorites, David Goss. But we also have Pamadu Ka back with us. He is the current head coach of North Texas SC and MLS Next Pro. But um, he, he knows a thing or two about soccer in Canada, having played for the Whitecaps. He was the uh, coach of the year in 2021 for the Canadian Premier League. He won a championship. Um, so great to have Pa back with us. And we also have Amy Walsh, former midfielder of the women's Canadian uh, international team. She made 102 caps for the team as represented her country in the Olympics in World Cup. She's a member of the Canadian Soccer Hall of Fame. We are so thrilled to have these incredible soccer minds with us today on what has been um, a, yet another crazy day in this World Cup. Um, I love waking up to results that just kind of shock the hell out of me. And today was uh, was no exception. Um, but Amy, I want to I want to start with you and just kind of get your sense as we're as we're leading up to this matchup uh, between Canada and Croatia. You know, we talked a lot about what this means for Canada and just, you know, being in the World Cup. But what what has it been like for you, this tournament so far and, and watching your country on the biggest soccer stage in the world? Yeah, well, first of all, this tournament's been bananas. It's been the best kind of chaos, <laughs> which is really fun. I mean, you see Costa Rica this morning talking about waking up to results and then they get um, that win against Japan. So that's one for CONCACAF, which is always great. Um, and then you know, just groups that are wide open after, you know, two games played or some groups haven't even played their second games yet. So I, I'm loving it. I think you're seeing the parity across the world um, with these 32 teams. Um, and then I'm sure it'll be different next go around with, with the jump up and teams. But it's been a really cool tournament to watch. Lot, lots of great players, the big players delivering, seeing Messi scored yesterday. Scoring yesterday was amazing. Getting that sliver of space and that phenomenal strike. So it's always great to see kind of the the people that you you pay the gate for, you know, to get into the stadium or the 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 guys, the big stars that you tune in to watch and they deliver. That's always great. But then you also get these upsets. So that's awesome. But seeing Canada against Belgium, I was I was a, just a ball of nerves, a way more nervous watching them and, and the same way watching our women's team than I ever was playing myself. <laughs> So, uh, so like <laughs> pinning out my soccer shirts and uh, my, my Canada gear here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think they're doing great. I think they showed that they belong. But I don't know with, with this Moroccan win. I mean, I'm sure we'll dive into that. But, I mean, is, is Canada's performance against Belgium any less legitimate? I don't know. We can, we can get into that. But I think Canada on the world stage for the first time in 36 years, I think they gave great account of themselves. But now they need a result. Agreed. And we are definitely going to dive into that uh, result between Belgium and Morocco. Um, also, real quick, I, you are already getting incredible love in the YouTube chat, Amy. We've got Mark yeah. Howard saying, Amy Walsh, Canadian legend in all caps yes. with about a million love exclamation that. points. So, like, I'll just sign off now. Leave high note, right? <laughs> We're off to a great start right now. Um, but Pa, I kind of want to throw it to you. Um, off of what what Amy said about you know how this how this group is looking the earlier result today and kind of what what do you think Canada do, what does Canada have to do today I mean they need a result win win the only thing that should be in their mind is win because I think it's been said a lot in the media with the herdman coming out you know saying that they want to take the game to croatia croatia coming out with a very nice picture of uh, you know of herdman so i'm looking very much forward to the game and 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 honestly like you said this group is wide open even though canada lost the first game to belgium they didn't deserve to lose they were supposed to win this game and uh I mean, if you look at Morocco today, what they did to Belgium, they just showed that this group is wide open. It makes me happy because another African team won, so I'm very happy for that. You know, uh, this is their first win since '98 World Cup. But again, today's game for Canada is about being on the front foot, making sure that they attack the game the same way that they started against Belgium, take the game to Croatia, and then get an early momentum where that they can create and and go ahead. And if they do that, 
Canada will oh, win. Oh my gosh, uh, so much on the line today. Guys, I wanna remind everybody that we have the live group standings up right now on the screen. These will be live as the game is happening. So as things change, as scores change, um, we will adjust accordingly. Um, and also I am monitoring the YouTube chats right now. We've also got the Twitch chat going. So if you have questions, comments, um, I will be taking a look at all all of the uh, the comments and hopefully getting a bunch of those in there as well. So we want you to drive this conversation um, as we watch along and get ready for this uh, this really really exciting matchup between Canada and Croatia. But right now, let's um, let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. We're going to start with Canada's starting eleven. And Amy, I want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing. Um, Kyle Laren getting his first start in a World Cup. Yeah, I think he he does well when he comes in as a substitute in that opening game. Um, and you saw Canada shift a little bit to more of those crosses looking for Laren on the headers. And you saw Jonathan David maybe not with the finishing touch that he typically has um, on the service for him in, in the first half particularly. But I thought he played an outstanding game, didn't get on the score sheet, but did very well. And I think the way that this shakes out, you've got Larea and Buchanan who have both been used as wingbacks under John Herdman. I think you see Buchanan um, slide up a little bit more in that right wing, more as a winger. Uh, and then David slides over um, or Laren up at the top and David on the right. But I think either way, they're going to have to contend with the the talent and the class in the Croatian midfield. So uh, whether that's David dropping in deeper or Davies playing more of that free central role that he's been playing more recently under John Herdman, it's, it's going to be fluid anyway. So regardless of what we have up on this board, I think you see Buchanan make his way to that right wing and then everybody kind of adjusts from there. All right, great stuff. Let's uh, now take a look at the starting 11 for Croatia. David Goss, um, what are your thoughts here? I think for Croatia, you see one change from the first game. Not a huge surprise. Um, so the, the change at the uh, front right position in the attack with uh, Vlasic injured now. So that's probably a bonus for Canada. That's one of their better attackers. But the, the core of this team is that midfield. It's Kovacic, Modric, and Brozovic. They are the ones who will set tempo. They're the ones who will control the game. Luka Modric isn't just the best player on the field today. He, he might be the best player at this World Cup. That's how good he still is. And he showed that at times against Morocco. I think Croatia played that game in neutral. They never really pushed the tempo. Never really shifted things and created chances. Part of that is because Kamaric doesn't offer as much up top to help them build off of as Mandzukic did in 2018 and all those other tournaments for Croatia, but it's still a really dangerous team. And it's a team that offers different challenges to what Belgium did. And that's going to force Canada to make some other decisions on the fly. All right, uh, Pa, I want to throw this one to you. Let's get um, Canada's lineup back up there. Uh, you said, you know, they, they need a win. They need a result in this. We saw them come out against Belgium um, very much on the front foot. I think we were all in agreement that we loved what we saw from them early on in that match. What are you expecting to see right away from Canada? How are they approaching this, this matchup? Well, given the words that has been said in the media, I'm expecting them to come out <laughs> trying, to put, uh, trying, to put, trying to put Croatia under the back foot. But again, to Dave's point as well, that the momentum that they had in the first 15, 20 minutes against um, uh, Belgium and didn't utilize today, they must utilize it. They cannot get those momentum because when the momentum starts to shift, that's where they got into trouble against Belgium, even though they played a very, very tremendous game. Being able to get ahead is very important for them because we saw it in their qualifying that whenever Canada was in front, they were comfortable, they were very calm, they were composed and they were able to control the game. And this game, they cannot allow Luka Modric to control the game. This game is going to be won through the midfield battle and Canada must be ahead in the midfield battle because we're talking about one of the greatest midfielders of this generation, a, a Ballon d'Or winner and somebody who's 37 years old, still controlling the midfield in uh, Real Madrid. So, I mean, if, if if I talk about young players, this is, the, this is the guy to watch of how to play football. So him and Atiba are very much with the experience they both have, going to be very important. But again, it's going to be the battle of the midfield and Canada must maintain their composure, their calmness, even though those words have been mm -hmm. set out in the media. Yeah. It's going to be war. It's, it's, it's going to be a war. And... <laughs> 
the team that wins today, the teams that win today is the team that's going to go on and qualify out of this group. Ooh, you know, with, uh, hopefully I like it. Morocco. Spicy takes uh, from Pa. If um, you guys, he's, he's referenced um, some of the, the comments that have been made in the media this week. John Hurston, <laughs> really, really uh, causing um, a, a storm here, stirring up a storm. This was, I mean, this has become a straight up like grudge match right now, but um, he basically came up and said that his team, he wants, you know, Canada to just F up Croatia. And then this was the response from the Croatian media <laughs> members, which is just <laughs> something. You have the mouth, but do you have the balls as well? I mean, I love it. I'm so here for this. I love, you know, just adding fuel to the fire um, in this situation. This is, um, I mean, as if as if it wasn't um, high stakes already. This is, uh, this is just tremendous stuff. Uh, Goss, well, you just... a tiny little maple leaf, though. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's an insult to John, right? Like, he's like, come on. Come John, on, guys. His wife needs to start working out based on the definition in that right there. Um, I think it's great. It's what we love about the World Cup. Right? Don't really cross over much, over much. All of a sudden, having a show. I also think it's genius. Like, genuinely. Canada lost in the first game. Alfonso Davies is in the only thing anyone is talking about. That. For Herdman, he'll take the pressure. He'll just let his players just enjoy the week. This game with nothing else going on. You guys know what I do. Like, if, that, if, you, if that Canada a half percent better chance to win this game, it would I think the Croatians were going to be hacking your mic there. Yeah, I know. Goss, he didn't uh, like what you were saying. It was, it was kind of it sounded like he was underwater or something. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> man was man was swinging. Man was get get a fix it. Now it's not me. That's right. <laughs> now it's not me. <laughs> No, yeah, we're trying to Come fix on, David Goss's audio issues, guys. So, so hang tight. This is the the nature of what we do these days. Um, but Amy, I'm curious. Like, you know, we we're obviously having so much fun uh, with this this banter between uh, the two countries and kind of the media uh, going head to head in this situation. But I mean, for for Canada, what did you when when John Herdman came out and said, you know, this is this is what I want my guys to do against Croatia. For me, I was like, yes, you know, like yeah, I was like, same. if I was on that team, I'd be like, absolutely. Um, but as a as a former player, like, you know, how would you have responded to comments like that? Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, these guys are willing to to run through a wall for him already, and then he doubles down on that. So I think you see him in the press conference. He doesn't walk it back, but he he says, you know, this is a learning moment for me as well. So he's at his not his first World Cup because he he went to a couple with the women, but his first men's World Cup, and I and I think the the emotion of of the moment kind of uh, overtook him a little bit, you know. So what was said in the huddle maybe shouldn't have been said in the in the post game presser but but that's okay exactly what david was saying i think you know i don't think it was premeditated i think it really so you guys a, did hear me we, barely we uh, got a little bit. Yeah. can you hear me now you know, i'm putting i'm putting the pieces together <laughs> okay thank but you I, 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 I can hear him you know, i can't it's, see it's him just the, there he is just the narrative you know no one's yeah. talking about the penalty no one's talking about all of the shots and no goals and expected goals like no one's talking about that at all so, uh, so yeah, so I, I love it from him. And, and uh, I think he just continues to, to defy expectations that not only for what Canada is capable of and what they bring to the world stage, but, kind, you know, bringing astronauts, you know, as, as kind of their <laughs> keynote speaker and, and motivating guys in, in a myriad of ways. So I think John Herdman is, is a great example of what you want in your gaffer and somebody who's going to lead this team really to success. Amy, I don't want to get in trouble here, but I did see that on social media. Can you also explain, is that specific astronaut a huge celebrity in Canada? Because a lot of people were excited and I didn't know who that was. Yes, his name is just eluding me, though. On, okay. Somebody can come up with a name. Do you know I this can find it on, on social media? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I <really> okay. Don't <laughs> know him. <laughs> so today is a nugget. But again, just going back to Amy's point, right? You have a coach who's who's willing to go uh, over and beyond, and this is what also exciting about football. This is him truly saying what he believes about his team. And we already know Canadians before Amy. Sorry, but Chris we, they're Hadfield. Very polite, they're very found it. quiet. Right. So to be able so to be able to have a coach that is 
that is going out there and saying that we belong and everybody can see that Canada belong, but also having the personality to say that this is what we want to do. You know, and even though it, if it backfires, people will say, yeah, he was not supposed to do that. But again, this is a motivation. This is him using the motivation. And again, the penalties, not only one, but the penalties, the multiple, should have been given to Canada. And maybe the game would have been different. And maybe he wouldn't have said what he said. But again, this is him making sure that the players can go out and play. And then the pressure love is it. on him, which is something that is love very it, love good. It. Um, guys, we are underway. Um, if you want to sync up with us, uh, where is my... They just took the clock off. The <laughs> We're at 29 seconds. 29 seconds, 30 seconds. So if you want to sync up with us. How are we? Are we are we in sync? Oh, they're going are the four, four, two, four three, of us one. in sync a little four, four, bit? Two. The game just started for me. I was always behind. I'm like I'm like oh, I'm man. like 40, 45 seconds in right now. I'm at a minute. Oh, pa, man. I'm hit refresh. In seconds. Oh my god! Oh my god! You're first. No. Oh! Fonzie! Fonzie! Wait. Amazing. No, you no. no, you're joking. Refresh, Pop. Uh, Come on. What oh the heck? God, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Woo. There we are. That's a good start. I will just join you guys. Oh, you Don't guys. Worry. This is it. <gasps> First goal oh. ever. Second minute. Like, talk about getting a monkey off your back, right? What? Oh, my God. Look Go at on, these Fonzie. fans. This is just giving me life. Borean, long ball. I need to see the ball, the the goal, because I okay. Here we go. Here we go. Borean oh, long ball. Go, so Kyle. much space for Larry. <gasps> Tejon. Yes. Oh my god. Oh. Go on, Fonzi. There you go. That's oh. How you reply. Oh, that is so good. Croatia <laughs> team leaping. That's. I mean, that's from straight from the training ground. That isn't it. Oh. God, look That's at that ball from Tejan. Oh, nobody can look say at nothing. that ball from Tejan. Let's Ain't go. nobody talking no no. about no penalties. That's the way to respond. Holy I mean, holy. okay, so what it, like, what does this do respond. now for the game? Like, what is Canada? Do you, is this, a, this isn't, this, you could not have asked for a better. No. A better no, you got, you got to keep the foot wow. on the gas, though. You can't let up just because you got one. So, oh, my God, you guys, Canada is now second in the group. 24 live standings just ju you know we're gonna keep updating these as they go um but oh mercy mercy <laughs> i mean this is this is this is a great that, that ball from, from tejan was well. perfection that's a poor that's oh, a that's a great defending poor, yeah. defending, poor defending beautiful, very beautiful poor delivery. defending very very poor defending but but the guy doesn't score on no. the header <laughs> he was <laughs> doesn't score on the header and he does it but i mean this is beautiful because if you look at the last game, he missed the penalty and where everybody, we, me, Dave, we discussed about it, Amy, that maybe we thought somebody like Estacio um, could have taken it or somebody else. But he stepped up to take it. He missed. And again, he's coming in with a different vibe. He is ready to play. You could see it that he is ready to make a difference. And when he is in this mood, Croatia is, Croatia is, gonna, Croatia is in trouble. You know, on the training grounds, you guys, after they they missed, I mean, not necessarily sitters, but really great opportunities on goal. The next day in practice, they were working on headers, particularly. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Payoff. Because right? Laren sort of, you could say, missed two at the end of the Belgium game, right? Yep. Yeah. For sure. He did. He did. He did most those. That is, and that he he would. That is typical. Uh, Kyle Lauren position to score, mm -hmm. right? And and when he's in those positions, nine out of ten he will score. Because for me, he's one of the greatest strikers that mm -hmm. Canada ever have produced, even at this young age. And he's keeping to progress. Already, he's number uh, two on the top scoring list. Oh. So it seems like Canada is going into mm -hmm. a four-four-two, right? Where they where they're not yeah, allowing Richie. the the creation to find it. This is one of the things goal. I think we talked about in the last game, but Canada, obviously John Herdman's built in tax, tactical flexibility. You've got players high IQ who play at a high level, but uh, the same exact lineup. You cannot, you cannot anticipate what team you're going to see. Richie's playing left back today. 
right? Played right wing back last game. Like you just can't predict what you're going to get out of Canada. Mm-hmm. No. No, I think it's good. And, and, and being able, that's why today's uh, game, you will see a lot of coaches that prefer to have uh, more versatile players, players that are able to play multiple positions because when it comes to the tactic, they're able to switch it up and put people in different positions. I want to ask you about um, Tejan Buchanan, who I, I know we were going on and on about that that ridiculous service into Alfonso Davies. Um, but what has, I mean, I thought he played really well in the first game. What have you thought of um, of his tournament so far, Amy? Sorry, I'm rejigging my lineup about who? Tejan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tejan, I think, has been outstanding. We remember he's, he's coming off an injury and didn't see a... Uh, a ton of minutes with uh, with Club Bruges, but he's had an excellent season there playing that wing back role. Mm-hmm. So I, I think in all these transfer rumors, um, as somebody was talking about, you know, we only had three goals or Jesus, Borean, get a hold mm. of that. Please. Um, mm. Three goals in 16 games or something like that. So we shouldn't be valued as highly, but he, he's playing a different role and he has more defensive responsibility. And I think you can see him on both sides of the ball um, feeling more comfortable, having more confidence, but also I think you see the trust that Herdman has in him and, and mm-hmm. the rest of his teammates. So he gets the nod here in my predicted 11. I had him out and it was really difficult for me to leave him off that 11 because I thought he did so well against Belgium and has done in all the preparatory matches as well. But uh, I think his game is just really rounded out so well and he's so dangerous 1v1. So he's always a threat. Um, for, for Canada, uh, mm-hmm. especially in that in that winger position, but again, it, doing defensive doing defensive job as well. So I I, I love Tejan Buchanan. Fox put a, a feature up about him like ten minutes before the, this game started. Susanna, I thought Herdman's quote about him was great, which is he rises to the level of every space he's been in. Right, mm-hmm. he goes from college to MLS to the national team, national team, and early qualifiers, late qualifiers, Gold Cup, and now to Europe and takes him a few minutes sometimes, but like he always rises to that level. And I think that's where the excitement is about him as a player. And you talk, Amy talks about the transfer rumors, which are coming out right now to go even higher than Bruges, which was one of the biggest transfers in MLS history. And they're Mm -hmm. a top champions league team. And I think that's where a lot of people see it. And the thing he's always great at is beating players and making a difference. And that will always have value, right? You could play the worst 89 minutes of your life. If you beat a guy 1v1, that's going to be the biggest moment of the game. Yeah. Oof. 100%. Are you? Are yeah, you great. Bit, what guys, the most before, 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 the, before the stream. Before you guys, this, look at that move. Before the stream <laughs> started, amazing. Goss was admittedly very nervous. Um, I, it feels better that you can't say that they've never scored a goal in the men's world. Exactly. Cup I know. Right. This is well, and Pro- Croatia have not scored in this world cup yet either. So. It's maybe Croatia is the one. The the and, and what God, a guy right? to score for Canada as well. Pa, did you, uh, did you think he'd score oh! a goal against Croatia one day in the world cup? Oh my God. Oh, oh. If I if I thought he would, I always thought he would score, but I didn't think it would be against uh, Croatia, and I didn't even think for sure it would be a header. Yeah. Oh, way offside, Kyle. I think I'm I'm uh, I'm ahead you're, of you guys on the street. You're first, you definitely which I, are. I think it's fair because you're in the Canada Soccer Hall of Fame. You deserve to see. <laughs> <it outside. laughs> yes, it's one of the perks. I, I get yeah. better internet. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually, um, there's no perks, you guys. There's zero perks. No <laughs> perks? Just, I, mean, <laughs> I don't believe it. I think that's something all of us from the outside are learning over the last seven months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, have we talked about uh, Atiba, 100 caps? I mean, this is this is something here. This is pretty historic for, right. for Atiba Hutchison, especially like this is two back-to-back starts, like battled that bone bruise. Mm. questions about his fitness he's 39 years old and here he is making his second start first one against belgium second against croatia and just absolute stalwart for canada in that midfield i mean the biggest thing with him is uh with him i think he b- brings uh yeah. composure and you need that right he's 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 been around he's he's seen it he's done it at the high level in europe 
won multiple championships, both in Holland, in Turkey. And uh, I had the pleasure to play against him in uh, Holland and also in uh, Sweden when he was coming along. So to have his presence, I think, means a lot to Herdman, but as well for the group, because he's somebody that he can be the rock for the players when, when, when it's getting hectic, he can slow it down. You know, he can be the voice. That is very important. So for him to have 100 caps, that's, you know, that's huge. Do you and think to he do it, to start? It... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gus. No, I was just going to say to do it in the World Cup, right? When he thought he was retired four years yeah. ago. Oh, huge. Now he comes back and plays at a yes. level he didn't think they'd ever make. And that's the 100th game, I think, is just super special. 100%. To get a century. Amy knows everything about <laughs> getting a century. How emotional is it? How emotional is it to get a century? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible. You, I don't think you realize the significance of it on the sort of when it's happening. Um, you, I mean, it's special and your teammates make it special and everything like that. But it's, it's after I retired, I think I appreciated it um, a lot more. And you recognize those that came before you and paved the way and, and then kind of what it means and what kind of bar they set. But then that may be, you know, there are kids of today's generation that, that see that and think I want to aspire to, to do mm. that, you know? Mm -hmm. Really? Atiba has two of those because he both paved his own way and <laughs> made it to 100. <laughs> yeah, so he, he was doing it on two fronts at the same time. Come do on, you think he'll get the start in the third game? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Do you think it depends on the result though? Like I think if they win, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he, maybe he goes with Piet in the midfield, mm -hmm. you know. But if they win, they uh, still will need to pretty much win again, right? Yes. With Morocco if, winning. If, yeah. I guess we have the live standing, so that can explain it to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remind. There's a good good reminder, everyone. These are live <laughs> standings that we have on the left of your screen. Um, there's a funny comment too in the YouTube chat. It says the table is upside down. Well done, Canada yeah. and Morocco. Because I mean, honestly, if you're looking at Group F, I don't think a lot of people would have anticipated that right now at this very minute, this is what it would look like. Just wild. This is why we love the World Cup, everyone. It is. I mean, I would, I would, I wouldn't take a chance as a coach. I think I would, uh, I would, I would. If Canada win, I, w I would still play the same lineup because then they have the momentum. The group has the momentum. You don't want to rock the boat too with too many and, changes, and you must go. And for getting it. out of the group is winning the World Cup, right? For the first time back in 36 years, you've never scored a goal. You're hosting in four years. Like, that's the. I guess the big example is Japan this morning. Japan made mm. five, six changes because they beat Germany. They're going against yeah. Costa Rica and. Now they probably won't get out of the group because of the way that that lined up, depending on what happens in the next game. So I, I agree with you. Yes. I think they came for the three games. That's the focus. And everything else after that is gravy. Yes, because there's a knockout stage after that, you know, and then it's about the little, um, it's the quality that will, that will win you, the individual players with the quality. But going out of the group, you know, you have four days, mm -hmm. four days rest. And most of these players are in season, so so they still carry that rhythm. They 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 physically good. So if I was, I would still continue with the same team, unless there's injuries. You guys, there's oh so much God. space. Sorry, so uh, much. there's so much space in between the lines right now for Canada to operate in. I'm really surprised by that. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it, but I'm surprised by well, it. <laughs> But that comes because of the way Canada is playing. Canada, I think so far for me, both games is the only team that is looking to play an open mm. game, right? The rest of it has always been a cagey affair through, through all the games and everybody waiting for their individual players to step up and make the difference. But the both games with Canada, it's, it's, it puts mm -hmm. all the teams off because they're not used to be getting pressed high. They're not used to be being that dynamic game that is open, free and flowing. You know, it, it reminds me of an MLS game, which is which is also good because it brings excitement to the to the people that are watching. You know, but as as to your point, this will be deadly for Croatia if they keep opening in open space and having Tejan, nice. uh, Laren, and Fonsi being able to run straight. This is going to be difficult for them. I also love that Ustakio last game he sits in, he tries to build out, but this game seeing that space, he's sort of ranged around. And opened up different channels and different yeah. angles for this team, which 
we've seen him do, but sometimes he wants the ball at his foot and he wants to drop in between the center backs. Mm -hmm. And you can understand with his quality. Matt Doyle on, uh, during the, our post game show of Canada, Belgium, he was, you know, we, I think we, we were all, we all agreed. Like we love the way Canada came out in that game, but he, there was concern from him about, you know, are they going to, did they, did they put out too much in that first game? Like, you know, what mm -hmm. was there, was the, was fatigue going to be an issue? Um, and I'm boy does not look like it right now. Um, which is really, really encouraging and awesome to see because, there, I think there was a little concern that they, you know, they put so much out there in that first match. I'm yeah, pretty sure Doyle's fatigued because he keeps complaining about everyone being fatigued and no one's been fatigued. In <laughs> and no one's been fatigued. It's like it's no. a World Cup. Everyone's Except the up same for about it, the U.S. And then they played England off the field. <laughs> this is Doyle. He's just being tired. old. Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, I would be, yeah. Heard men talked about, you know, in personal records and analytics and, and everything like that, and how high that tempo was and how Canada was able to keep it sustained versus Belgium, you know, despite not not getting that goal and and taking taking the L. I, I think that, you know, he's right, you know, can fatigue, especially with a guy like Hutchinson, whom we whom we've already mentioned, um, but also maybe the back line. Um, you know, was that going to be an issue? But it, it does not look like it so far. And if you stay on that front foot, then you, you give yourself the luxury of of not being able to sort of rest on your laurels, only mm -hmm. being up one goal. But then, you know, maybe you can bring in some fresh legs a little bit earlier than you anticipated. Amy, you've seen Kamal now in person for two years. How has he gotten better? And how does he sort of affect this team? Because I thought he was phenomenal against Belgium. Yeah, he was he was my man of the match, maybe tied with uh, Richie Larea, whom I, I adore and I hate the fact that he plays for TFC. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love him. Um, but yeah, no, Kamal is has just grown um, so much. I think I see you see it a lot in his in his decision making. He sometimes tries to go on those mazy runs. And, uh, you know, they're not always successful, but I think the decision making has been a lot better the way he covers, the way he reads the game. And I think even Stephen Vittoria was talking about um, his development, Kamal's, that is, uh, over the last, you know, 18 months, 12 to 18 months. Um, and, you know, despite being a really young player, plays with that veteran presence and he's really somebody that Canada can can rely upon. And those timely tackles, like some of the blocks that he mm. came up with against uh, Belgium were out of this world. He had the tackle in the open field that, okay, Richie won up to a little with the slide across the box. Right. So it didn't get as much buzz, but it was, I mean, it was a must-win tackle that he goes down, I think, against De Bruyne on. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. Am I behind? I where everyone is. I have no idea. Good Lord. I just want Canada to score seven oh! goals. Oh! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gosh, finally caught up. Um, guys, we have a really good question in the YouTube comments from Connor Ennis. Hey, Connor. Thank you for watching. Um, he said, with Costa Rica winning this morning, what are the chances of all CONCACAF teams making out of the group stage? What do you think? Mm, I'd say if Tata Martino's coach of Mexico, pretty low. Yeah. Not much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know. Listen, I think what we've seen from this World Cup is the games become global. Everyone can play with everyone, and the sort of like gaps don't exist anymore. Yeah. Costa Rica against Germany feels like a, another step that's potentially a little too far. Um, but you never know. I wouldn't want to say no at this point. I know, right? No, you can't say no. <laughs> No, nah, you can't say no. And the reason for it is anything can happen on a given day. Come on. Again, if Costa Rica now, they get a little momentum. So it can be something that all CONCACAF team have chance. It would be nice for today to reset the CONCACAF was the only federation coming into this round outside of Antarctica, who has done really poorly um, <laughs> to not to not win a game. So that that was nice to get that a little bit fixed going into an all CONCACAF World Cup for sure. Uh, well, right now seems like a, a perfect time to bring in uh, the uh, the fifth member of our team, Christina Uncle. So great to have you with us again. Um, and you, you have said that in this game, 
Um, we might see this ga game officiated yes. a little bit differently. Can you tell us? Can you tell us why? Go, go. Oh, I know. One second. Where I think some right. of us might be ahead, so I'm just gonna oh, wait God, for a I'm quick not... second. No, nope, go, Johnny. <laughs> no. So I'm going to be a bust it for the rest. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean. So how many minutes, how many minutes are you going to Who guys knows? Uh, we're actually on the third. <laughs> we're on the Canada-Morocco game now, Pa. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, 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 can, I can tell. Uh, yeah, no, I, Susan, like we, as many of you guys have seen throughout this tournament, especially in group stages, there's been a, kind of a different level of officiating in the sense of some games are being refereed very strictly. Some games are being ref with a lot more management, letting fouls go, as you can see, or Sato with the Mexico-Argentina game yesterday, right? How we, there was lots of yellow cards not given, whereas in some of these other games, we've had some very quick yellow cards instead of management. Um, it really all kind of comes down to the official that you have on that field, whether they are a rookie World Cup official or not, which I want to remind people, rookie World Cup officials are still the top 1% officials in the world. Just need to clarify that. But, you know, where we take here, right, we have um, Modric, right? He's allowed to have a little bit more, uh, takes more risks, a little bit more chances, more comfortable in his skin, very similar to the officials as well. And that today's game right now watching – uh, sorry, there's a service in the box. Uh, today's game in Canada watching, right? It's a rookie uh, referee from Uruguay. It's an entire mm -hmm. common ball team, not only on the field, but in the booth. Um, oh. And I was expecting him to referee this game a little bit more tighter, and I'm glad to see he's letting it flow a little bit more. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Don't know where you guys are at. Uh, and oh, I still am a lover of the game, so we still get excited as referees when we see beautiful football. But I just want to give you guys a little bit of insight on that, on kind of the officiating styles and what you're expecting, what you're seeing. So when you see Orsato or Spanish referee Laos in the middle of the game, expect more of what you expect from a football refereeing, football expectations, higher football IQ. And the younger referees are doing a little bit more nervous, like a like a brand new uh, player in their first World Cup as well. So a little bit. Of are they more nervous? Are they listening more closely to what FIFA is trying to get them to do? Both. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're always, you always have that butterfly feeling. You always get a little nervous when you walk the ball out, right? I mean, there's nothing that compares to a World Cup game. So naturally you're nervous because, you know, truly, sadly in the referee world, right, we're only judged upon the mistakes that we do, which understandably so, that's our world, right? You make one game critical decision error, right? Like we're not going to see probably Johnny, uh, the referee on the Belgian Canada game for the rest of this tournament. And this will probably be his last World Cup. Oh! Let's go, Fonz. <laughs> so, yeah, a big mix of that. When you're when you're young and you're new and you don't have two, three Come World Cups under your belt, you know, you got to listen to the bosses a little bit more. Okay, fair. Amazing. Um, Christina, great stuff. As always, I'm sure we'll be talking to you very shortly. Um, in the meantime, enjoy. Thanks. Keep being a fan. We love it. Amy, don't worry. I cleared Christina last time. She does not hate Canada. So. <laughs> oh. Fonzie's been phenomenal. He has. Boys on the mission. Tejan. More movement. <sighs> so what have we seen in the sort of the last like 10 minutes from, from Canada? Um, has Croatia kind of, have they started to play their, themselves into this match a little bit more? I, I think they have. I think yeah. they, they were, they were maybe a, a little bit stunned again by how quickly Canada came out and had to sort of regain their rhythm and their footing a little bit. But you can see them dropping off on Canada a fair amount. You're seeing Hutchinson and Eustachio with lots of time, uh, you know, in the middle third, um, you know, to have the ball. And I think they're content to let Canada possess a little bit more um, and maybe more fearful of them and going quick in transition. Um, but then um, Croatia as well, they're so good on the counter press. So when they're regaining that ball, no matter where they're winning it, they're able to go quick as well. Mm-hmm. Richie Larea with an illegal throw in, so that that's always positive. <laughs> Those are not called very often. Either. No, they're not. 
<laughs> they're not they're not that obvious most of the time where you just <laughs> drop the ball for Laren to take what it. Was over. it what was it that he did? What what's illegal about that? Explain he literally him. didn't throw just, it. He literally he just, just dropped, dropped it. The ball yeah. in front of him. So it doesn't come over his head. <laughs> it was yeah, like an uncontested drop after it yeah. hits the ref's leg. <laughs> exactly. Not allowed. Yeah. Can't do that. Round upon. <laughs> Just, you know, not in the world the cup, maybe. <laughs> Other times to do it. Oof. What a start. So it feels like the Kyle Laren decision worked, Pa, to bring him in and sort of have that center forward. Well, like I said, oh. this is a the different lineup that he can throw up on teams and having both David and... Uh, no! It's two dangerous players. Sorry, Pa. You're behind. So, oh, so flag I, is up! So flag flag is up! Woo! It's offside. Is it offside yes. goal? For, a cat, for Croatia. I don't really I understand mean, when he was off, but... I know. I, are they going to... It's got to be the start of the play here. Yeah, it's got to be initially. Yeah, they got to look at it. But oh. again, to Amy's point, as well as Canada mm, is... Uh, that's because... not offside. I think I it... That's not no, they're calling the first ones off, I think, because his flag... I, th I don't think it's Kamarich. I think it's the layoff to him that they're saying is off. Let's see here. Oof. I mean, that looked really close to me. I it do does not... look very close. Yep, it is. It is the layoff. Yeah. Christina has just confirmed that it's the layoff that is out offside. I have Oof. no issues with the call. It now? just looked very close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right. I mean, this is... <laughs> What are you guys on for time right now? I'm 2641. I'm the same as you. I'm 2637. I'm I'm 2565. <laughs> You're in 2021, Pa. <laughs> I'm trying to be in 2023 almost, but it's not helping me. So I should blame I should blame AT. &T. Yes, you should. No, you would never do I'm, that with of AT and T. Oh dear. No, we love AT&T. That was what I meant. You we wish you had AT &T. them is the problem. I wish I had AT&T. That's what I meant to say. Come on, we have a list of sponsors I mean prior to any more, right? Words now, I, just, on this? I just have them uh, imprinted on the back of my brain. So uh -huh, I know. Gosh. It's, it's just natural. Rolls right off the tongue. Would really love a body armor right I'm now. I'm feeling thirsty. <laughs> maybe a Heineken 0. 0.0. <laughs> or a, yes, a Heineken 0.0. Let's go, Allie. Allie. Yes, tackle. <laughs> nice. Amy, what's his best position? Oh, it's tough because, you know, a, a lot of people weren't so sure about that transfer early on in the year with CF Montreal when he was playing that wingback position. Mm -hmm. he, there were some growing pains there. But uh, I, I think it's I think it's as a as a fullback. Okay. Uh, I really do. But uh, but he's versatile. He can do anything. And he's such an intelligent player. I think Herdman gives him the same role, but to a lesser extent than he had with CF Montreal, and that he he trusts him with, like, oh, here we go with the with the replay. There it is. Oh, that's it. Mm. Wow, mm. love that call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ali, he's he's relentless. Um, you know, he's always good for a timely tackle. Um, great communication, great energy, great engine. Um, but skillful as well. And I mean, I think we're seeing him a little bit let down on the service early on. He's had a couple um, mm. in that final third where we haven't quite seen the quality that he has, but he's capable of, of delivering those crosses on a platter to either, you know, Laren or David or, or Davies. I'd like to see that first goal replicated, maybe Johnson on uh, as the, uh, as the provider. So he's yeah. capable of that, but I like him in both, you know, I'm, I'm sort of dodging the question, uh, but, <laughs> But uh, I just like him all around. And, you know, if that move to, to Celtic is is indeed um, signed, sealed, and delivered, um, I'm going to be sad to not only not have him in a CF Montreal uniform, but not have him for sideline interviews. Yeah, he's good. He's excellent. So thoughtful. Like, nary a cliche to be found. Just so insightful. He's just, I mean, if I could go to him every time, I would. But but that's not fair to, to everybody else. <laughs> You're going to... But I mean, when you see when you see his rise, though, and you see the rise like with the, with these players who's who's gone through League One, MLS, and now be capable to make a move abroad. 
What's your thought about it? And then how do you see it for the future of Canadian football? I think the more eyes on these guys, and I think that's what this stage does for them as well, is it is it is it puts respect not only on Canada as a footballing nation, but on all these individuals who have for so long you know been outsourced and we're seeing the same thing with the women's game with the lack of infrastructure for a women's domestic league in Canada and how all of this talent is having to be um, you know outsourced and you know you're exiled to to different leagues and and I think Canada you know maybe these guys aren't going to the top five leagues initially but I just think it's a it's a matter of time and I also think it speaks to the quality now in MLS for a long time, there was, you know, MLS is seen a little bit as a, as a joke where big guns go to retire. And, and I think MLS is, is a real quality league. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> <Is> that? <laughs> I said, thank I'm you not for saying that. I think that I'm seeing the no, narrative. But Paul's one of the big guns. So that's why he, that's uh... it. no, 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 no. I said that because I came here at the age of 33. <laughs> so I'm like, nah. <laughs> here we go, Canada. It's really interesting that Ustakio is not on the set piece. I know. I was thinking the same. He's not like good for Canada. He's like elite in the world at that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Plus, I mean, they're, they're two of them, uh, you know, real quality on the, on those set pieces, but that's, that's something that, uh, that Herdman has kind of given over to, to Davies more recently. I remember yeah. a goal that Canada scored in qualifying with Eustachio on, on service right from that exact spot, maybe a, mm -hmm. a little bit deeper. Oh, oh. Good work, <laughs> Tejan. <Thank> you, <guys. laughs> That's Paul, what do you think what? about, about the CPL and like adding to, you know, what I was just talking about with more eyes on these guys going overseas, going to Europe. Um, Fantastic. I think it's fantastic. I mean, if you think about it, Canada was in CONCACAF maybe the only country that didn't have its own league, you know. And uh, given that uh, now there's 11 professional teams in Canada and more in common, I think it would do great wonders for the youth. It would do great wonders for the for the game itself and more eyes on the game rather than only thinking about hockey. And I think the more that they created and what it also gives is the spot to go play CONCACAF uh, Champions League, which is also mm -hmm. very vital, right? And the more eyes that people can have and also playing against MLS teams or maybe Mexican teams uh, in the CONCACAF region is mightily, mm -hmm. mightily important because I think that has been missing in the Canadian game. That is where U.S. has, for the past 25 years, developed because they created the league. They created the league for their own. And I think once Canada can do that with the CPL, let it grow, I think it will be fantastic. Both having a CPL and an MLS is huge, given that in 2026, World Cup is coming to these countries. is huge for both nations. Yeah, what do you you're, think? Seeing, you're seeing it personified in, in a guy like Joel Waterman, right? Yeah. 100%. Joel Waterman, Lucas McNaughton, who I had the pleasure to coach in uh, Pacific, who went, to, who went to Toronto, right? So this... It's, it's an important avenue for Canadian players as well as for mm -hmm. foreign exports because it might be even young players in MLS who need minutes and if they can go across the border in Canada and get some minutes there in a league where it's, you know, they get to play, I think it's great for their development and that's what, and that's what Canada needs, right, to, to make sure that we can see more, more and more of these players because there's a lot of good players in Canada. Oh. 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 For who? Mm. Oh, Croatia knocked it around, but cleared out. Um, <laughs> it only fell to Luka Modric in the box. So yeah, yeah. There's deal. nothing to worry about. No danger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nothing to worry, worry about. about I do. I, I want to ask you guys about what you've seen uh, Croatia do in the last sort of like 15 minutes of this of this match to kind of get back back into this. What adjustments have you seen that that they've made in this one, Pa? Uh, the game started very at a high tempo and I think they were again they were not expecting it yeah. from a team like Canada they may be expecting Canada to come a little bit low but now that they've got into their own rhythm you know they're no more composed and now they're trying to find their own rhythm where they will knock the ball around and trying to put 
low Canada to sleep, but I think it is a it is a game that they mm -hmm. have the experience. You know that you know the experience. Oh no! To them and oh. the place. Let's go, Milan. Oof. So I guess yeah. that's a safe. <laughs> the problem on this play is that Tejan and Davies went right to press, mm -hmm. and Ustakio stepped high, and yeah. then Croatia plays through them. And Belgium just never did that in the whole game, and Croatia obviously will. Ooh. I mean, it, it... it is a little, little kick save. <sighs> All right, come on. It, it also cool. feels, Paul, like, uh, Croatia has pushed their line of confrontation a little higher and Canada hadn't readjusted. Yes. The last two turnovers have been caused by Croatia just pushing higher and winning it. Oh my god. But also but also oh. is here is also here that Canada Sorry. He doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't uh, that, Croatia Paul's living sport? in a better world than is us. It? Croatia tied it one one. Yeah. Yeah, but no. but 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 that was what I wanted to say because now it became just a little bit like the Belgium game where Canada the first thirty minutes is ahead, is pressing, mm. doing well, and then they get a little bit of the momentum shift, which happened also against the Belgium because of the quality of the plays that uh, Croatia I possess. Mean, that pass can't get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, this felt like this was coming. From yeah, Croatia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, Holly. But again, Modric picks it up. There's only one Canada defender on three Croatia center mids to start. Ah, oh, that's bad defending. Poor uh, defending, guys. You got to drop mm -hmm. with the runner. Oh, man, Ali. Sorry for the late commentary. Uh, All right. I mean, again, we're talking about... Uh, the runners up in 2018 World Cup. They have that experience. They've been into the final. So it's a moment of them just finding their groove and coming back. But this is a poor defending. This is something that Atiba should follow. For me, it is Atiba, follow your runners. Uh, you're already there with, with him. Either you communicate with Kamal, but one of them had to follow that run. Oh, man. Well, um, as you guys might have noticed with our live standings um with that goal from croatia canada back down to <laughs> the standings still no i still baby. believe i still believe baby. i still believe no, uh, listen we've got yeah we've got a plenty plenty of uh of soccer left to, this uh, left this to has play. been the story i think of this world cup for any team that hasn't been able to extend the one goal lead mm -hmm. has had the other team come back right it's international game Teams okay. haven't really trained that much. No one's putting in 90 full minutes. Yep. And so if you get a chance to push a lead to two, that's that's how you win the game. You don't mm -hmm. sit in and yep. defend the lead you have. So Canada was always going to have to score again. Mm -hmm. And I think they're fully capable of it. So, Pa, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm back. Okay, so what do they? how do they finish out this half? Like, I mean, you how do you, how do you get momentum back if you're Canada? Uh, well, not giving a break. Maybe through set places, not give a place, but set place can be an important one. You know, this set place they might get in because Croatia is starting to dominate the ball. Mm. So Canada is going to look for maybe a transition moment or a set play. But spe speaking of the of these set plays, like that was Fonzie again on that delivery from that right channel, and that was not yeah. good. You know, and Canada was also poor against Belgium on set pieces. Yeah. And set pieces play to your point, Amy, and you've been a player. You, you've noticed how important these couple of years it has been. And it, it's so decisive that mm -hmm. it can win a game. And that's why you always need your best players on them. The services has to be brilliant because when the services is good and the runs is good, there are chances that goals going to yep. come from it. Absolutely. And I think, honestly, I love Fonzi, but I think Estakio is much better set piece delivery than Fonzi. Then knowing Fonzi is just okay. Richie Larea is starting a fight with, fight with Luka Modric because he starts a fight with everyone. That's yes. got me back. <laughs> That's what I need. I need a Richie. I need Richie to get in Let's someone's go. face. Let's go. Let's go. 
I don't think I've ever met someone who's scared of literally no one. Ooh, stop. Oh, I don't down. like this. What's happening yeah. here? Mm -mm. I was going to say the other way you get back into this is just get the ball to his feet a little more. Let him dictate. Oh, yeah. That too. Again, Kamal and Vittoria deep. No one else going with them. Yep. But I think, like Pa was saying, I think that's Hutch that needs to slide down there to fill yeah. in that gap. Yeah. Now you have to, because as a center back, sometimes uh, you don't want to leave yep. that central zone. But I mean, if I look at the goal, that's easily either come out slide, but he's 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 covering mm -hmm. the central space. So Atiba should never stop mm -hmm. his run and just follow the runner. And this is part of you've pulled Alistair Johnston a little wider playing the back four, right? He's normally in that channel and, and there's a little yeah. more cover for you. Amy, if, if Ustakio's out, what's your, what do you think the move mm -hmm. is? I think it's Sammy Piet. Interesting. Okay. And not just because of my oh, CF man. Montreal bias. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they need in there. I don't think you go with no, the Pone no, and is also right fit enough to go. I don't know. Yeah. You also have K. I mean, yep. Forgot about K. <laughs> well, you have also. You guys have also, and I think also maybe this game is a. Me personally, I think it's a game for also because you can allow uh, Atiba to sit a little bit deeper, and also you can allow him also to push a little bit uh, forward, making those late runs that he mm -hmm. does very well in in Toronto and where he can create. But also he has this mean streak <laughs> in him that you may need in midfield as well. You know, this is because the midfield battle um, for me is where this game is going to be won. And we just saw it right after with the great pass from uh, Kovacic. And if Kovacic and Luka is taking control of the midfield Canada, then we'll be in trouble. But we have to con He's, control of the midfield. What, I'm who's saying who's winning the midfield because, battle right now, Pa? If you're... Yeah. Right now for me, um, it's yeah. Croatia. They are taking they are taking control of the game, through through Luca through uh, mm -hmm. Kovacic, and Canada seems a little mm -hmm. bit to die off because of you know it cost energy to yeah. Matt Doyle's point you know fatigue might look like fatigue is starting to kick in a little bit but oh, wow, can yeah. they go to half uh, one one? That would it's be a good. great ball by Johnston there. Mm -hmm. Fabulous ball. I was. Uh... I think it was his rookie year when I was chatting with people at Nashville and they were like, yeah, he was a center mid until we got him. So he's like unbelievably good on the ball. And they, uh, for Nashville, cause they played the two up top. They really liked the deep cross he could hit, mm -hmm. you know, from 40 yards deep, he could hit it from the sideline, uh, which has not been asked of him as much, but they were saying that they got him in and they put him out wide. And then he was like sort of running the game through the wide space because yeah. he is in his head. He's still a center mid. Yeah, is the, the confidence in the tight spaces as well, right? To be able to mm -hmm. create space for himself. He reset on. <laughs> I don't want to talk about reps. I don't care. I'm fine. <laughs> you know what? I'll be honest, Dave. I would love to see you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, really. I would really love to oh, see you. Everyone, everyone who plays... Everyone who plays co-ed in men's league with me, I think the problem is I spend all week like talking about games and watching games. I'll say stuff to people and they're like, come on, man, it, it's a rec game. And I'm like, I just think, I just think if we press a little higher in this space. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yes. No, no, no. no. Oh. Ah. I... Hey, hey, the game is still on. We still got 45 minutes, Canada. Oh, we can't man. Give up Canada. That's, um, That's still 45 minutes. So stretched there. So stretched. Atiba looks tired. Does he? Yeah. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks tired. And Amy knows this. When you've been a player, you can see when, when you have to make a defensive transition and the head is down and yeah. the leg's not coming up, which is understandable because he's been out oh, and just played uh, a cup game this before is, he played. This is a... Gut make a foul, oh, make Milan. a foul, Fonzie. Christ, that's nah. Oh. That is a silly goal to give up. That is I will say goal. again, though, it's the space off the right shoulder of Victoria, where Alistair Johnson isn't supposed to be because he's playing in a flat four. 
and it feels like that Canada has not handled that well. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh man. And I would, I would, I would take it. I would take it even further to say the give it the given one two may. I think Fonsi should have made yeah. a tactical yeah. foul. The reason why I say it is, I know in his head he's thinking, "I'm mm-hmm. on the yellow." So if I get this, I'm out of the other game. But again, that's the point also that make a tactical foul, yep. get back into shape. You go, you go in halftime with one one, you reset, and then and then and then again with the thing with Atiba, after Kamal make the tackle, he's you know you could you could sense it. That the that the first game has oh, taken yeah. a toll. You can on see, that. you can really mm-hmm. see it with Atiba now. Even the first couple steps, yeah. that, the, that so the fatigue is now is, an like, issue. Fatigue is now uh-huh. a little bit kicking in because again, the emotional side is something that people really don't get to see. Amy know this, and I know this because when you play for the first time in a competitive game like a World Cup, and the buzz that is mm-hmm. surrounded around you, and the first game, you know, you have this. A momentum that you played very well, but you played for 90 minutes the same. It's going to kick in. And we could see it now because uh, the, 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 the emotion kicked in after the first game. Mm-hmm. They were on high. And then, and then after, Croatia started to recover themselves, be more composed, and get on more on the ball. We're not calling and then that? you could see that. Come right on. <laughs> Where's Christina? Why is that not a foul? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ali. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, Close on him, uh, Ustakio. Oh. <sighs> now, collectively, we're looking error yeah. prone. Oh, and no. Oh, golly. No. I will say, I I questioned a bit, Piet, for Ustakio. I think for Atiba, that's the clear move because you want to free up Ustakio to be on the ball. Right. Right. So, Piet coming in, yes. he can cover ground, he'll, he'll win tackles. And that allows Ustakio, because Ustakio right now, I think, is sort of dropped deeper trying to help cover alongside Atiba. Does it, is it me or does Ustakio look like also he's yeah. carrying something? Because he's not running. He's not running. No, uh, he looks a bit gimpy open. too, even when he's running. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, bo- both of the central midfielders, for me, given that they're going in, a, they're playing in a 4 4 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got nervous when I remembered Pause still. Yeah, Pause still we, watching the last World not. Cup. Do we hate that Doyle was right, I mean, guys? Do we hate it? I, I know. I was no like, one. oh, I man. I hate that he was right. Yeah, he we wasn't like... right. He wasn't no, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think his assessment, Dave, we have to give it to him. He was right with this one. And the only reason I say it is, I can imagine and feel, and so does Amy, how the mm-hmm. players are feeling now. Because right now is a critical moment for them. And that's why I said, if they have gone into the break with 1-1, you can reset. What? But now you're going in knowing that you lost the momentum. Are there no fouls anymore? Oh, no. If that's the case, uh, yeah, but... Richie should probably hack someone right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, when is the last time even that Uh-oh. that Laren touched the ball? I mean, well, he had that one a minute ago where he tried to hold it up and then right, but fell, like you know, fell down. But mm-hmm. yeah, he has not been in dangerous spaces. Yep. Oh, God. So to be clear, this shot from Levaya, because uh, I was watching the game earlier, is double the speed of Kasher Fuller's shot. That was the weirdest shot in soccer. He hit like <laughs> legitimately. I think Landon called it a changeup. Okay. It was like slow and knuckling, and the <sighs> J- Japanese goalkeeper over jumped it, which I don't know that I've ever really seen before. Uh, Tiba. Oh boy! Come on, Estakio, you got to get back. Come on, yes. Right. Come on, live it. <laughs> yeah, I need somebody to take this game Man. by the scruff of the neck and just... bring everybody along. I mean, it, it seems like I know we've talked about like fatigue being an issue, but then also, you know, it, how much like does does the panic start to set in a little bit? You know, you you were controlling this game, you've let it slip away, and now, you know, this is still this is a, a young team. This is our first World Cup in thirty six years. Like, you know, how 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 do you manage that? You know, how do you manage that mental hurdle of like, 
getting yourself back in, knowing that you need a result in this game. Yeah, I don't know if it's not – I don't think it's panic so much. I just think it's it's they're feeling a bit untethered, you know, mm-hmm. like they start off so well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want that goal right off the hop, and especially is from, from Davies, given the miss penalty. Seems to restore confidence for him, but then – you know, you allow Croatia to get back into the game and then Canada doesn't really have an answer for that. And maybe it's what Pa's talking about with uh, with all the energy um, and, you know, the super high tempo game against Belgium and then all the adrenaline and then that's kind mm-hmm. of worn off and then it's a bit of the mental game. So now these guys really need, you know, uh, Commander Hatfield maybe at halftime or George <laughs> Herman. Um, I don't know if you tear a strip off though, but they need to get back into this game. Mm-hmm. No, no, I think for me going in, um, if you should you should still install that confidence, you should still install that belief, and now maybe is to make them understand, okay, where what is happening, and what is happening is the spacing is getting bigger and bigger, right? With the, the two central midfielders cannot cannot run it, and we not and mm-hmm. they're not compact. Canada was not it's, it's not as compact as they need to be, and I think Canada still got mm-hmm. goals in them. Canada still got goals in them. There's more goals in this game. Just where it's going to fall, come down to how they both come out in, in second. All right. Half. Well, yeah. uh, it is halftime, guys. Um, and this is a look at the, <laughs> the live standings. Um, man, it looks different than it did um, 20 minutes ago. But um, as it is right now, Canada um, in fourth place in Group F. But let's, uh, let's get to some of the first half highlights. It started off... So well, so well, guys, for for this kind of team, man, we were <laughs> we were we were um, we were all feeling pretty good about this. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't. Do we have the highlights? Are we ready to roll those? Here we go. I mean, this was what second minute in the game, and that absolute delicious delivery into Alfonso Davies from Tejan Buchanan. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better start, Amy. No, I mean, it's just exactly what I what I talked about. That was all of that pent up energy after creating so many opportunities against Belgium. And then finally they get they get one. But then maybe the release is too much. You know, maybe they take their foot off the gas. And then like Pa was saying, I think they were too stretched. They weren't cohesive enough defensively and left lots of space for Croatia to operate, especially um, in, in Canada's back line. Oof, these are rough to watch. Yeah. The two goals yeah. Going yeah. To I mean, just... Because, no, because we, you know, we talked, you guys have said it now for the last 10 minutes. Atiba just looks tired and you mm-hmm. see that first goal again. And we just talked about a hundred caps and he's a legend. And there's a, there's a very clear reason why he's out on the field to start this game. Right. Because John Herdman needs his presence on the field. Uh, you always knew that subs were going to be a part of this. You have five. You get three windows, you get halftime. He's 39. He's coming off an injury. He came out, what, the 60th against Belgium. And it looks like he had 35 minutes in him and not 45. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and Ustakio can't really cover and help for him. And I think when you go back to the goal and maybe if you rethink this after the game, and we'll see, because uh, I, I think you're right. There's 45 minutes to go. This is a team that can score goals. This is a team that has options on the bench, that has depth. Um but I think you'll look back and say, okay, the goal, maybe you don't stick with the same game plan, right? You sold out early against Belgium to create goals. You got one here. Maybe they should have pulled Alistair a little tighter, dropped Tejan a little deeper and covered a bit more. And I could be wrong, right? You Maybe you give Modric too much space then and they score goals anyway. But I think that's sort of something you'll look back on coming out of this first half. Well, I mean, if you look at, the, as we discussed, right, they came again gone blazing they were on the front foot they were aggressive they, they had the high energy they were they were intense but as we also know that can die out and to your point going maybe one zero up maybe you could say okay now are we in the mid block where we uh, rest a little bit and then hit them on a transition uh, because of the speed that Canada possess but I think for John Herdman as well no we're not going to sit back we're going to continue to go maybe go for the second goal but also again you playing against the runner-up from the last mm-hmm. World Cup, who still have great players that are playing in top teams, that have quality players that you give them half a chance and they can create something. And that's what we saw in both goals. In the both goals that Canada conceded came from the spacing was not uh, compact enough. Uh, you know, there was a lot of space that 
unfortunately for Atiba and for Estakio, that is not their game to cover those lot of grounds. And then I think a little bit of savviness was missing in terms of could they have made an earlier foul, a tactical right. foul? Could, could they have followed run inside the box? You know, these little things play in and these are the experience that equation team has that Canada doesn't have yet because it is their first World Cup since 36 years ago. But I still believe that they still have the chance to get another goal. And when they get another goal, this game is going to be interesting. They cannot come out second half conceding yeah. because now Croatia, Croatia can sit back and allow Canada to come and hit them. Yeah, the that's an interesting point, Pa, because I think they have nine players who got to the final in 2018. Croatia does. Canada's yes. never been here before. Hutchinson, you know, exactly. in his hundredth cap, played in five qualifying campaigns, yeah. never made it to the octo except for this last time. So they don't have that experience to rely on. Um, but I think I think I agree with you that they need to still go quick, go quickly in transition. But mm -hmm. to do that, you sit maybe in that lower block and you you do to Croatia what Morocco did, where they sat back, not mm -hmm. super low, but you force Modric mm -hmm. and Brozovic to drop quite deep in order to receive the ball and you move them sort of out of that yes. threatening area in that middle third where they're able to to just unlock Canada's back line. So I think that maybe they do that, but then, you know, still stay on the front foot and go really quick in transition and, and get David, Laren, Buchanan back involved in this game because, you know, in yeah. the last 20 minutes, there wasn't a whole lot happening except from set pieces for Canada in terms of provoking the attack. Um. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Well, let's bring in um, let's bring in Christina Uncle because um, I know that there was you guys had some some issues, maybe perhaps some some no. some fouls. I got nothing that to say. Weren't, Christina, that weren't that weren't called, Gus. I feel like no, I, I feel like this is they're all moment. soft. They're all soft, but it felt like there was contact twice, right? <laughs> So it's funny because like you guys can see me and you know the others can't. I should start like doing hand motions, etc. Like to give to even some reassurance or not. Um, yeah, like ultimately, right, the first half, uh, you know, this referee, the Uruguayan referee, which actually moves very well. Um, I agree with David on two of those what I call simple fouls, right? Just just give them because one of them actually turned into a quick counterattack that mm -hmm. ended up resulting into nothing. However, if that had gone in back into the net, now all of a sudden you got VAR having to go to the beginning of the attacking phase uh, play, uh, APP, and clean that out. And now having to make a decision, is that a clear and obvious foul that could have been a simple foul taken care of by the referee on the field? And now the referees are not part of the conversation that we're having. And that's where, you know, people take a look at officials and our reaction and what we do now after the fact. I'm always looking at the official. What are they doing proactively to prevent the bigger situations and the bigger plays? Preventative refereeing is huge for me. Uh, so I agree with David. I'd rather want, and they're always happening in the center of the midfield for a reason. All right. That's where simple fouls usually occur. No one takes a simple mm. foul in the attacking third. Um, so if you can clean up a little bit of those, I actually like the style. I like some of the contact, letting that go. The players are accepting it. The game is accepting it. Um, you know, aside from our friend Kyle going crazy, and you're right, he always, he doesn't mind attacking anybody. <laughs> We've seen that in the MLS as well. Um, <laughs> you know, the, I, I, I like the referee style, and this is the first time I've seen him um, kind of coming out of, on the international stage, aside from some, you know, U17, U20s, which aren't the same as the full, you know, senior teams. Uh, but I do like his style. If you can just clean up those center uh, small fouls, We'll be good. Love it. Anything else, Christina, guys? Right. Yeah, Susan, I had a question for Christina. How much do you think these referees who maybe don't have as much experience at a World Cup, a player like Modric being in his ear might be able to influence the game? Ooh. Yeah, no. So that, that's a great question because, I mean, <laughs> we come in and we know, I mean, we know who these players are, right? So Modric plays, right? Real Madrid, Champions League. So this referee doesn't see him often right as a, as a size some other UEFA referees they do certain players do especially the type of style of they who they are right so um I, you know Captain America right we talk about Beck I talk about Becky going to the women's game right she never yelled and when she yelled you're like oh shoot something happened right so you start listening to certain players because of their style of play those with no disrespect to Neymar I know he got fouled like 10 times in that game but when he continues to roll and roll and roll and roll all of a sudden you start losing a little bit uh, of kind of you know, you don't give him the first bite of the apple. But someone like Modric, um, honestly, he is having, and I watch him all the time in Champions League, um, he's a class act kind of a player. And so when he starts yipping, you start saying to your team, 
hey, check my back. We might be missing something, right? Mm. So it's not that they get in our minds. It's just dependent upon the type of player it is. It kind of helps us say, are we missing something? Or now nah, that person just complains all the time. Now they're the boy who cried wolf kind of a concept. <laughs> so yeah. someone like Modric would make you tell your team and even in the booth, make sure we're not missing anything behind our back. Make sure we're not missing a, a challenge on the back of the heel before the ball is played, right? Where my my, my vision's not at at that moment. So uh, great question. Uh, but yeah, some players we just dismiss. We're like, you're just, you're just crazy. You just yell <laughs> all the time anyway. So. God, I want, I want the, I want the, the, the notes, you know, I want to know like which players are on that list. Like this guy. Oh, the quiet yeah. cheat sheets. Yeah. 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 Oh, you should, you should see the coach. I want to too. We're like, oh, that person again. Yeah. But also to that point, but also to that point, you have the coaches that will look at yeah. the referees and also understand, okay, guys, this is, this is the kind of referee that, be aware because he might be loose mm -hmm. giving the yellow card quick or this is a reference that you know what go yep. be in his ears you know to get those advantage and to christina's point that when you have somebody like luca modric talking to you mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. tend to listen because you're like Phew. and 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 i think that experience that he is showing right now that is also something that can tip the game into croatia's favor because canada doesn't have it we they do have Fonzie. But he's no, not he's not. Davies player. doesn't talk a lot. And he's mm -hmm. not there yet. Davies doesn't talk a lot. So he's not there. Afonso is all about the game. But sometimes the other side of winning is not just only playing the game. It's also playing the officials, unfortunately. No, it's fine. There's three teams on the field. That, but... And sometimes we have to play the players. How do we psychologically get in their heads or the coaches? Like Herdman is a great yeah. example of that. Like this is a coach, as we all know, who who plays in, I wouldn't call them dark arts, but kind of like a uh, Mourinho, right? Like they, <laughs> they, they take every advantage. They see a bigger picture. They move the narrative. So when you step on that field with coaches like Herman, you're like, okay, how do I get him and try to control him as much as possible? So he doesn't throw the game into disrepute kind of a thing. Wow. <laughs> so, so question to you, Amy, we've seen it uh, with uh, Herman and it surprised me that he hasn't done it. I was expecting him to do it. That, I didn't say it. didn't come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to shift that momentum, what she normally does, me, I was expecting him to do it because I think after the yeah. goal, yeah. five, ten minutes mm -hmm. after that, I was expecting him maybe to, you know, to make that subtle, subtle uh, call where I'm not saying what call he does. Right, but the where, where Milan has the mysterious break. <laughs> ah, yeah, see, like, Amy me. knows. Like, we've all done. We've seen it. The Netherlands are referring to the Canada Women's National Team. Like, why are you down? They're like, don't worry about it. Hello. Like, okay. <laughs> there is something called the coach's the code. Coach's code. code. <laughs> it just said it. I am learning <laughs> so much. Coach's code. I didn't say it. <laughs> but, but I was expecting that because I think that has helped them through this World Cup. Uh, to gain back that momentum when it's been lost a little bit. Mm -hmm. during games. That's true. That cynicism. You, you talked about it with that uh, that foul that Fonzie doesn't take, maybe because he's got in the back of his yeah. mind he's he's on a yellow. Um, but that stops mm -hmm. it. You know it, that play or that uh, that sequence in its tracks. You know, and then we're maybe talking about yep. you know maybe facing down the Fonzie not being a part of the lineup next game but at least you're still 1-1 mm -hmm. in this game right so yeah maybe a little bit more of that cynicism yeah. from from and that gamesmanship from Canada could have helped mm -hmm. them there with that Morian uh Borean mm -hmm. injury break and then maybe adjustments <laughs> tactically a uh, slide Atiba into the back line I don't know figure something out just to see out the half yeah. wow wow yeah. you guys this has been Can um a, a very enlightening halftime conversation. Christina, uncle, you are. Can, the can I ask <laughs> random question here for Christina before we let you go? Cause I'm like Amy and Pa and maybe Susanna. I've not played in international. Is every conversation happening in English between a ref yeah. and players at a world cup? Ah, yeah. Uh, so the, all the conversations do happen oh, in English. That's the number one primary language for FIFA. I mean, obviously the other official languages are right. German, French, um, I think Spanish is considered one of them, but we all have them in English and the understanding is so that everyone can, so is supposed to be understanding and able to hear uh, what we have. However, when you are officiating, let's say you know how to speak Spanish, right? Or Sato speaks Italian. He knows enough Spanish. If he's refereeing Argentina and Mexico, he's speaking in Spanish. Okay. So <laughs> he's long, allowed to, you're allowed to speak. Allowed whatever to, as long as like the difference is as long as everyone around you can generally understand what you're saying. So no one okay. can allege so-and-so saying this, so-and-so saying that. So Okay. Yeah, Orsato knows Spanish. He he was speaking in Spanish yesterday. Um, he was speaking in 
various language. I'm pretty sure he spoke in Italian. You could see his body language get upset too when Argentina didn't do that double sub. Um, but yeah, we can speak in that as long as everyone understands us. Okay. God, cool. This has been, honestly, this has been one of the best halftime chats like in watch along, MLS watch along history. I feel, I'm not kidding. I've learned so much. It's so good. Um, guys, thank you so much for your questions. Christina, we'll see you in the second half, of see course. Uh, this, oh my God. You guys, do you know what? That was also nice too, because it kind of like took my mind off um, what was has happened in this in this game so far. Um, but I guess we have to, we should talk about um, the second half. It looks like uh, Osorio right. and Kone are both coming in, halftime subs for Canada. For for Ustakio and Laren. So Atiba's staying on. Okay. Oh, wow. But as Amy said, it could be him dropping in and Osorio yeah. and Kone becoming the center mids. What do we how do we feel about this? Or maybe even maybe even they go with only Yeah, and Holden. those two. That's what and it looks like right guys, now. Right? And Fonzie and and Jonathan David are gonna Fonzie yeah. high up. Yeah. Oof. I mean I think it's a I think it's a uh -huh. great, great sub because Kone is Kone is somebody who also can can dribble with the ball like from midfield and you need that and also he's a little bit unpredictable mm -hmm. in his style of play which I think it's great and he has that confidence. Also, as we know, is you know it's a veteran, is somebody that that can bring that little bit of the chirpiness into the midfield battle. I think that um, when the spaces are going to be big that's where that i think uh atiba will struggle a little bit because we see it in the first half and if that is going to be the issue again i think that's where they need to do a better job of having maybe sam piet come in all right guys uh second half has officially kicked off if you're trying to time where, where are you guys at what where's your clock at 4604 i just well, started okay. 46 yeah, I mean, Man, what is going on with me? God, I'm just I'm 46.07 oh, seven, seven right now. There we go. So I'm a little bit a few seconds behind you guys. Well, I'm miles behind you. I mean, <laughs> so I'll try to figure that out. I'm on African internet, so we're fine. So I will leave it through David and Amy if something good happens. Oh, something God. Happens. It won't be much of a secret. So it, <laughs> it does feel like Tejan's also sitting a little deeper. Busy. Yep. Um, so trying to provide a little more cover centrally there. What do you go... So that so they're going with a five five on Yeah, the it's sort of a five three two. Five three two where the where they allow from five three two where they allow. Yeah. Yeah. Five, three, two, two, yeah. Yeah, he, he's going back to his normal tactics. Just a reminder, too, to everyone, um, we've got our live standings on the left-hand side of the screen. And uh, for Canada, I mean, if they if they lose this match, they're it's it's over. It's over, Amy, guys. Amy, can I – I don't want to be – Pa's going to yell at me. It's fine. But um, coming into this, the performance against Belgium to score against Croatia, like let's say they don't win this yeah. game. Is that a – is that a World Cup victory? Like, are we already what? doing this? We're doing no, this. Let's not do it. Let's not I do it. Cancel. Save, that for, Cancel. Yeah, save that for the post game show. We, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm Man. hopeful. I'm not worried about you are, you it. You I was are just a liar. Totally hopeful. I was just trying to have a discourse. Dave. Oh, listen, Dave. Oso's on the field, so I feel good. Kone is a superstar. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with him. After I interviewed him at the playoff game, Amy, I was like, holy crap. What did you, what impressed he did, you about him? He is like you talked about interviewing Alistair Johnson. I, I don't know. He he had never really played pro soccer before. <sighs> I did not expect that he would just be in two languages doing five interviews after his first ever playoff game wow. and sounding like a vet. This is better. This is good. Okay, what are you liking, Amy? I just think you know, go, <laughs> going forward, finding those pockets. Yes, oh, so yes, oh, so yes, so, so, oh, so. Oh, oh. So I think we're almost <laughs> you, are, you are correct, sir. <laughs> he was not himself against Belgium, and I think that's fine. That's Jonathan Osorio. I love that. So why then do you want to talk about something? I just was having conversations, game? guys. I just wanted to talk. Oh, my God. I mean, it's it's been nice to see in this World Cup so many 
different teams and also the joyfulness some of the teams bring. And I think Canada definitely have uh, opened the eyes of uh, the yeah. people mm-hmm. around the world. Like, I mean, like, because honestly, and you mentioned this, uh, uh, Dave, like the how global the mm-hmm. game has become that and, and, and where it's played everywhere. And now the difference between teams is not that much anymore. Yeah. Yeah, the experience is similar for teams. And when you talk to yes, coaches, no. you know, for coaches, for national teams, they can rely on similar, similar language, right? <laughs> similar tactics because so many of the players are playing at the same level when they go into Europe and Brazilian league and stuff like yes. that, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so, so if you think like, for example, the African teams, I know, I know a lot of questions has been yet. Yeah, how come they haven't gone any further or anything? And Mourinho put it spot on on the other day, and I was and I was and I was listening to him. He's like, Africa has talent to win World Cup, but the best players are always played for different countries. Oh, you're saying playing for European countries? Yeah, yes, like in Polo scoring countries. against Switzerland and I, or scoring against Cameroon. Exactly, That's against Cameroon. Say. But also, if you look at that, and I think the game is not only now in Europe no more. The game is excellent to everywhere. And I think that people also will see that come 2026. Because MLS will grow to be in one of the best leagues in this coming next five, six years. MLS, I believe, is sixth league in the world with players at this World Cup. Let's go. Behind the big five of Europe. There you go. Let's go. There you go. No. And I believe if you took the U.S. out of that, they'd still be sixth? Yeah. Really? But that's how big the gap is. I... I could be lying about that or making mistakes. There is some stat where it's not just that the U.S. won at the 2018 World Cup that they've improved so much. There is a ton of representation for other teams. Canada obviously helps a lot. Um, but how many? How many? Thirty-six MLS players, something like that. Yeah, in the World no. Cup. That is huge. Almost another chance. I'm no, guessing. no, free kick, yellow card. Uh, I yellow believe to Tasha. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. But he was smart enough to fall down that. too. Tejan's smart enough to go down and be like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. We're still looking a little bit disjointed. I think really defensively, there's yeah. I think there's a lack of of cohesiveness, <sighs> kind of in in the team shape, and then also between the team parts. Uh, mm-hmm. not, not looking convincing I defensively. Mean, I mean, when you give up the two goals, obviously it it does play part. But to your point, it's like the shift of uh, the system. And again, as we mentioned, Amy, uh, I think when you see the fatigue, as Doyle is saying, that is really kicking in, guys. I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry to mention it. But it's you can you can sense it and feel it because it's taking its toll on the players and maybe now is the right time for him to kind of you know um, bring on yeah. fresh legs. I but, also sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to say the mindset is similar and the mm. mentality of being on that front foot and being aggressive on the press. They they haven't really relented in that regard. But you see Fonzie there next or near near the goalkeeper. And then our back line still isn't in the 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 half. Like I mean, the the yeah. the, the team is so stretched. So yeah. if you're going to press, you press. But then everybody has to come along for the ride, or else you expose yourself going the other way. Oh my God, oh, Ismael yeah. Kone is going to be a ball and door. He is so good. Uh-huh. This is ridiculous. Oh, God, that's he was cool. playing that, that's like something. <laughs> he was wow. playing amateur soccer what a year ago, yeah. and now he's letting it run and. Taking it on the half turn against Modric and, and Kovacic? But... No, he, I, I think he's a very good player and he showed it in MLS this year. And uh, but <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how much higher I could go. Wow. <laughs> From, he's already pretty good. <laughs> so I had to try yeah, I had to try and go big. The, there's champion. holes in his game, right? As a young player, inconsistencies, mistakes, but his ability to scale oh, to the next level and this is one of the things I always look at with young players. Like, how do you react to being pushed higher? Oh, oh Milan. It's Milan. Okay, I, uh, Atiba's got to come out. Oh. <laughs> I, no, he's, 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 
at the game is now too stretched for him to be able yeah. to control the middle. He, he, he Sami Piet is is not the most dynamic yeah. player, but he could able to control it a little bit better. And to your point, Amy, the pressing and uh, and and the cohesion has to be better. But also, I don't think this is the right moment for them to start losing their heads or try and go gong show. Right? There's still yeah, plenty no, of time. A lot of time. So can this can they still be composed? And can they still try to uh, cohesively work together, you know, from the build-up, from the middle third into the final third as a team? If they can do that, they still have possibility because they showed it. Get it, Fonzie. Yes. I assume Ustakio is injured, right? Yeah, there's I no, yeah, that. No. There's no way you only sub. You only sub Ustakio and not a team at halftime if Ustakio can go. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, think that's easy. what I'm saying. It's, you, yeah. What a save from uh, Milan. I know I'm far behind. <laughs> <this okay. laughs> uh, by the way, we didn't mention this. Uh, FS1 put up a tweet at halftime saying that Lionel Messi is going to sign. I saw Miami. that. Who? What yeah. was? What outlet was that, Gus? Zero Don't, idea. Someone's oh, British young. or something like that. Oh my God! Oh! <laughs> Canada almost yes. scored. And the yellow. Oh, the Croatia. I mean, I mean, I think it will be fantastic. It will be huge for MLS if that was to be that you have a Lionel Messi yeah. coming to your <laughs> end. I think what that will do, it will be amazing. I mean, just for oh. just for his presence. Um, not to talk about media coverage, but that that also goes to show uh, what also those players oh. think of MLS and where they see. Could that MLS not be at. a red? We get Christina on there. Like that's intense. Christina's <laughs> bobbing her head yes and now. Oh, but a tampon? Oh, 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 okay, Atiba. Christina. Yeah, no, I, that? it's a good question, right? Because you kind of see a little bit of a swipe, right? Are they kicking, et cetera? For the fact that the ball is in the general vicinity, we're going to stick to yellow on it, right? Okay. Ball's gone, clear, studs into the back of the knee. We'll go red on that one. But <laughs> it's a good question because – Clearly, he knows he's not going to get the ball, but we'll keep it at yellow. Okay. I don't like it, but I accept it. (laughs) You accept it? (laughs) I don't like it. I don't like it. I have to accept it. Amy, you'll you'll learn when you have Christina around, you forget that you can't just yell stuff at the TV. You got to like, you got to be really sure about it. (laughs) Show some respect. Oh, Christina. That's that's awesome. (laughs) We appreciate that. That was great. Oh my goodness. Have you seen anything like what has Croatia just kind of stuck to the, to what was working in the, at the end of the first half? Oh no. You have to say it again. I know. I know. (laughs) I'm like, so I'm I'm like in that weird in between. I'm like, I'm like five or six seconds behind them. Go, go Fonzie. Go Fonzie. We need the Panama goal again. Where's... Yes, go Fonzie. No, I mean, for Croatia, again, to your point, uh, Suzanne, it's like mm-hmm. they're, they're ahead and right. they know with the experience that they have that they, they just need one momentum or one, or, one, or one brilliance from an individual quality to make something happen. So I think, uh, I think now Canada mm-hmm. is trying to push. And Canada has to get goal in the next 10, 15 minutes. It's very vital. Maybe Amy can allude to that. Why, why in important. the next 10 Otherwise, to 15 minutes? Why, does it, why is that sort of the important? Because that is the crucial, oh boy, that is the crucial moment uh, for a team that to have a lot more time and to regain that momentum mm-hmm. and push okay. maybe for the third goal. And, and then that will put the Croatia also on the back foot a little bit because they were like, okay, do we then, mm-hmm. do we then, uh, go for a tie and then play for the next game and everything can happen within that. Okay. So I think for, for Canada, this do you agree? 10, Amy? is the most crucial moment. Yeah, I do get, but like, cause you, you push so much uh, now, but you also have to be mindful to not open yourself up going, going the other way. And then the game is out of reach. Right. So you have to be smart um, about it and the way you're approaching, but you, you do have to push because then, you know, maybe Croatia just, just locks it down. So you, mm-hmm. you definitely have like 90 plus minutes. 
to try to get this equalizer, but there, there is sort of, um, you have to seize the opportunity, I think here in, you know, before the 75th minute and then, you know, the, the game can shift on you again. Mm -hmm. Reminder, if Canada loses, they're eliminated. Yep. So for Canada, wah, wah, no, I'm not, just yeah, saying, we no, no, but I'm too. saying to the point, <laughs> Canada's going to, they're going to they have to, like, yeah, they got it. And no this point do they, do they close no, they up shop to. and say, oh, gold no, differential, right? no, blah, no, blah. No. So no matter what, no. they will have to push throughout the game. Okay, if it gets tied, maybe now it becomes a new conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that will be part of this mindset over the course of the rest yeah. of this game. They also yeah. didn't use any moments with the half set subs. So I was just going to say, Hartman still has three subs in three moments. How have the how have the subs have you have you seen any difference with um, Osorio and Kone on on the pitch? Has they have they changed this game at all? Yeah, yeah I think they've given them more push yeah. offensively when they're in possession. The okay. two of them. Having two guys central, it also seems to have freed up Tejan a bit. Um, but Atiba is still struggling out there a little bit behind them. So there's that. I also, I know Alfonso Davies is the best player on this team and he's world class. But when you play him out of position, I just, I think it makes the game harder for him. Because it's not natural for him to be a center forward or to drop into center mid. And I think he gets a little bit uh, thrown off of his own game. Junior Hoylet's on screen right now, so he's coming on. I, I wouldn't hate to see Lucas Cavallini in this game. Oh, He's just miserable to deal with for a back line. Mm -hmm. and, right. and you bring him on for the last 15 to just have an option up top. That's similar to what Laren did for you off the bench last game. Okay. Right. I think that's a good shout because also the Lovren and uh, the other center back, they are physical. And sometimes against physical center back, you have to match that up. That would free up the spaces underneath and all the players, and I think that could even be a benefit for Kone and mm -hmm. and also having Cavallini on top, and even for Fonzi mm -hmm. if he's keeping Fonzi, you know, to make those runs behind. Because right now, David and Fonz, David and uh, Afonso are too too similar. Yeah, they're not gonna win any duels, but you know, so I think that's a I think that's a good shout. So who are we thinking Hoylet's coming in for then? I think maybe Atiba. I would, Richie. It's Richie. I would, it's Richie. I, would, I, would, oh. I don't know how you oh. don't have Sammy Pieta. And I think you, you bring him in and then you, you, you insulate the back line. He covers so much ground. He, he gives you kind of that. He, he grounds the defense in a way, connects all those team pieces so that then you can go. Referee. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Not you, Christina. You don't have to react. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, I agree with you, Amy. I think to me, one of the unfortunate things about just the way World Cup has happened where, you know, it's not the moment of qualifying is Mark Anthony K's form over the last year dropping off. Mm -hmm. To me, he's the option. What he was playing when qualifying started of he can also play the killer pass, which is what you lose a bit with Piet. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you that with the way this game's played out and the attacking pieces out there, Piet being safe and being able to cover ground and Unle you know, unlocking a bit more creativity from those guys. To me, it also makes a ton of sense. Yep. So ju Junior's in here, and he was great on uh, set piece service against Japan. He was phenomenal for Canada. It's Fonzie. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Don't worry. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> Pa, we no, just no, no. need you. Pa, you're like Christina, how she's watching the extra views after the play where we'll react and then you sort of clean up what we miss. Yeah. And you bring us the commentary. 100%. Yes. That sounds very good. I mean, you and Amy are a ball of nerves anyway. Yeah, I think it, it goes back. You know, Fonzie taking that that penalty against Belgium. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can fault him for it. You know, mm -hmm. he's the face of this team. You want a guy bringing with confidence. You want him to step up and and do that because imagine a, a Hutchinson and a David take it. They miss. Then the question is going to be to Davies. He faces the criticism. Why didn't you take it? So on that set piece there, I want Hoylet to swing that in. But I also don't fault um, Alfonso for, for calling his own number. But eventually now that's like three or four. Give someone else a chance. <laughs> Again, that goes to your point of who did they put, who did Herdman put to be the set piece takers? And you know, and you know, as yourself, like when, when the coach puts somebody on to be the set piece takers, mm -hmm. we just go with it. 
right? And then and then maybe during the game is when when one of the most experienced will go. You know what? Okay, you had your turn. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else go. And I think that is something also should come from the players, you know, because now that they're seeing it themselves, can they react to it? I love Jonathan Osorio, by the I way. I do too. Yeah, I he's, love him too. I'm stoked that he's getting this opportunity. I thought he was going to get the start, um, quite frankly. Did you? I had him in and, and Laren in mm -hmm. at the expense of Hoyland and, and Buchanan. But, and I love Tejon, but I just thought that you needed a different look in this game. But anyway, moot point, but I, I love mm -hmm. him a lot now. But I think you need, you know, I don't know if Atiba is giving you that that kind of anchor in that deeper midfielder position to really release Kone and Osorio forward. You know, I mm -hmm. think there's going to be there's going to be a little bit of reticence on their part to really and truly commit forward when that's what we need them to do. Listen, I had Osorio and Atakube starting both games, so <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that for me is another interesting one. Uh, and I ask you, Amy, given that Sam has been playing uh, all the qualif uh, qualifying games and seeing how successful he was mm -hmm. doing that, do you, do you think he should have started both games? No, I don't. I don't think he should have because as much as I, I love him, I think, you know, the guy who wears the armband and who's toiled away in, in Turkey is, is, is the guy that you need in the middle of the park there. And, and as good as Sam is sort of defensively, that pit bull mentality. And he's he meant Sam Adekube, by the way, not Sam Piet. Oh, I'm sorry. Sam Adekube. No. Sorry. Yeah. I was going with Sammy Piet. Yeah. Uh, I realized yeah. in the moment that the two of you had different associations to yeah, the two different I'm, I'm also yes, not looking at, yeah, at you guys. I'm just watching the game. Yeah, no, right. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was surprised by that. I should have said that. I'm was cool Sorry man. about that. Left field. <laughs> but um, which is where he plays. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, mm. I was surprised. That was my my one surprise there with with that starting lineup against against Belgium. But uh, yeah, I wonder yeah. If, if we see him here. It's yep. still yeah. plenty of time. It's still it's still plenty of time. I mean, it's it's we know crazy stuff happens in football, and I always say the moment when Liverpool played the uh, AC Milan in the final uh, Champions League, right? Three zero down, come back three three, right? And especially we've seen in this World Cup with the referees that they like to give mm -hmm. extra time, so you know that can still play a part. So I still I still don't know what today I saw only one minute. That's something that maybe Christina can let us know. Today I only saw one minute the first game, so I'm curious to know why. I think Christina was telling us before the game that the experienced refs are refing the way they've always refed. Yep. And so they're oh. doing what they do 365 days a year. And then the less experienced refs are following the FIFA, um, what is it, uh, the slideshow that was presented to them. I there she before. is. Before they got here, oh, you could show. say it better. Points of <laughs> emphasis. Um, yeah, no, it, it has been. It's been really alarming to see them uh, require right. So, what we give additional time for successive goal oh. celebration, uh, any VAR reviews, uh, substitutions, um, kind of any excessive delay in time. And what FIFA was really focused on was trying to put the game more back in play. So, even when we had, um, I think it was, I can't remember England's first game. Technically, Iran. only yeah, 60 minutes of active play time actually occurred oh. out of the 90 plus 24 minutes. So I know I'm sitting. <laughs> so, I mean, but what they introduced it, they introduced it way too soon. Nobody was prepared for it. So in tournament, FIFA's kind of even directed the younger referees to let's maybe we tried this too soon. So you're oh. going to see, yeah, less and less as you've seen throughout this second group of play. And you'll see in the third. I think the most I've seen so far has been nine minutes. And justifiably so, because I think there was like three reviews in there, um, which were easier. Which to also, there have been have reviews as you explained to us last time, so that's added time anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's where we're expecting. If you have VAR, you should be seeing more of the time. If you don't have VAR, I think they're going to go back to how they were naturally, how we always have done football uh, with additional time, the magical number of three. <laughs> Great stuff. The reason me and Amy keep reacting, by the way, is the gaps are there now. Yep. yep. Croatia's okay. getting. I was just gonna say, are we like? Do you do you feel? I know Paz said like we need to score a goal. That was like you know in this time frame, the 10, 15 minutes. Like, do you see? Can have you seen Canada have opportunities to find that 
to find that goal that they desperately need. Uh, yeah, I the think problem right now is – oh, sorry, you, know, Amy. you go, you go. I was just going to say the pass before the pass right now yeah. is the issue, right? The the guys along the front line are, are finding gaps, and it's going to fall on Osorio and, and Kone and clearly Alistair Johnson as well to find them in the spots, and that's just that – you need that quality, but everyone's capable of hitting it, and when they do, <sighs> come on, Atiba. <laughs> Whew. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't say anything. <laughs> But but that's the pass that's available though now the one that he missed mm-hmm. hit there, and then the combination play we're we're seeing uh, David and, and Davies being able to to combine with those wider players. No, three one. Oh God, that, yep. that's the one. Oh God, that's the one. Oh you guys. Oh that's a killer. That is a killer. Just a little ah. too passive. Um, and just to remind everyone that's watching, um, if Canada lose this game, um, they will, they will not be, well, you can say that they will not be moving on to the knockout rounds. Um, oh man. What, um, can you kind of, what have we seen in this goal? What was, uh, the defensive breakdown here? Well, I mean, if, if you back up maybe, 10 seconds before yeah. that pass goes out to the left, the back line is shambolic. <laughs> yeah. Vittoria is really deep on those, on those two runners. Mm. And then Miller comes all the way back and he's basically on Vittoria's shoulder. So that, that pass should never, ever, ever land. Yeah. In that uh, far post. Ever, never. Oh man. Uh, it's a great touch from Kramer yeah. on his first touch. And then, it seems like no one also wants to step in. No one wants to give up a penalty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. What's the frustration, Pa? It's Again, you see the three goals, and for me, these three goals are all goals that could have been dealt with. And to, and to Amy's point, Hoylet is not trying to mm-hmm. close the yep. cross down. Kamar, Kamar is too close to Victoria. Victoria is dropping inside. And you know, oh, and it goes through Atiba's leg. You know, so it is. It is so it is three goals where I believe that could have been stopped or dealt with. But again, this is the experience. This is the experience that being on an international level that they're gonna gain from it. So this World Cup was to kind of to show the world that mm-hmm. this is who we are. But now you see in the experience of Croatia. Uh, Croatia, like I said, that. They are just mm-hmm. waiting for that moment to close the game down. And this I think is the Ka- moment. Cavallini just came on for Jonathan David. Unfortunately. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately. I mean, there's still 20 he- minutes left. Yeah. 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 Ah, then you, you, you're asking a lot now. It is you're a lot. A it lot. is a lot. But we've, you know, stranger yeah. things have happened. I'm just trying to keep the vibes up, guys. Listen. <laughs> No, the vibes will be good up because it's still, you know, you know, the vibe will be good because I know Dave, uh, Dave is. Dave, Dave's little no, baby. I'm Nobody fine. Come back and I'm fine, fine. I'm totally okay. fine. Everything's fine. I am not fine, you guys. No. I am yeah. not fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> I mean, respect, it's Amy. Amy. But again, there's Sammy. I mean, it's it's oh, it's it's the build up <sighs> to the game has been terrific, and I think it's it's again. Let's give credit also to like to Croatia because I think uh, I think the players that they have are players that are playing I mean, with some of the that, biggest. That's teams such an important in point to remember because you know Belgium and Croatia are very good teams. These yeah. are and very Morocco. They, and Morocco. This is the group are, of death. This like, is the best group in these my These are mind. really, really, really yeah. good teams, yeah. and so you know I, I don't think. I mean, I know hey. like the way we're, we're kind of talking. Okay, we got. You still got it. Post mortem, nice. but um, Canada no, but Canada's been point, in right. every game. You know, like this is not this yeah. is a very difficult group. Put your foot on it, Fonzie. No, hundred percent. And to your point, with that is again, if you look at the the teams and their players, three quarters of their players are playing mm-hmm. big yeah. teams. They're playing big teams, and we cannot underestimate the power of playing in the big teams. Being playing under pressure, uh, week in week out, has to perform, you know. And again, you talk about two teams that go, were second go. and third. 
at the last World Cup. Mm-hmm. Stay in the box. Group. Go. No. That's not, that's not easy. <laughs> yeah, right. Two semifinalists. <laughs> Yes, two semifinals. And a Moroccan team group. that just pulled a Bayern Munich and Chelsea starter back into their squad. Yep. Coming into the World Cup. It's a tough exactly. group. And and I do think, to Canada's credit, this was sort of what John Herdman has talked about over the last few months is, I don't, I can't remember the term ever, tier one, peer mm-hmm. A, tier A, whatever term yeah, he uses. Yeah, tier one teams, but also tier one players, right? Right. That make mm-hmm. up your teams. Which I disagree. I think Ustakio is one. FC Porto is tier one. I don't know what determinations I need to input to him to get that status. But um, he has said that that's where Canada doesn't have the experience yet. Like Pa said, that won't be true anymore after this week, right? And for the future of Canada, that will never be true. Because you will always have players from here on out who either have this experience that they can pass on to teammates or, hands down, I'm talking about the players we're seeing here, Ismail Kone, we're talking about Tejan rumors, Alistair Johnston. I'd be shocked if Sam Adekube still played in Turkey next year. Mm-hmm. I think you will never have, you will for now on have Canadian players playing at these high levels um, week in and week out. 100%. You just have to look at right. the U.S. And, and that's more, you just mm-hmm. have to look at the U.S., what, what, what the World Cup uh, at the biggest oh. stage has done for them. And, and we've seen that the, uh, uh, become a thing that after every World Cup, countries will go to one of the teams that has been the surprises or the teams that have caught ISIS to look more and more mm-hmm. for their talents. And the more that the Canadian players are playing in MLS, but also playing abroad, it's going to make the country mm-hmm. better. And that is the most important thing for Canada right now. How do we continue to elevate our soccer. So, so that we I have a question. You say our, our soccer because we talk a lot about a team's identity, you know, and I think like over the years, like yeah. the United States, right? Like the identity of a United yeah. States national team is a team that's hard to beat. They're always going to be a tough opponent. You know, yes. there's grit, there's all of that. What do you think right. Canada has established in terms of their identity on the global soccer stage? <sighs> The biggest thing I've seen, and uh, Amy can allude to this, is the brotherhood that the Canadian national team have shown over this uh, over this cycle with Herdman was never before because we had a say FC on attack, <laughs> you know. And people may say it, but also that's a narrative that will stick in people's mind because that was the case because of the players that have paved uh, the way before them. You know, they were not looked at uh, on a respectable way because Canada, you mm-hmm. think of hockey. You're not thinking of football. But now in global stage, having one of the greatest, youngest players born in this millennium scoring a goal, right? For you, for your uh, for your Nugget Dave, there's two players born in the new millennium that have scored goals, Jude I Bellingham and one. Fonsi. But okay. <laughs> right? So so having him playing for 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 Bayern Munich, winning thing and doing stuff, Jonathan David playing for Lille. Right and Alistair Johnson hopefully going to Celtic, which is a mm-hmm. massive team. You know, Chance this to play team Champions is going right? to elevate Canadian football. Yes, play Champions League, uh, going to elevate uh, Kyle Lahren playing for Besiktas. These things is important, and that's also where US uh, had a little bit of go ahead start. And right now, you see some of the biggest stars in US are playing in the Premier League, but playing mm-hmm. for great teams, which is huge. And that's why like the MLS and the CPL is what the uh, U.S. and Canada need to continue the youth development so that within 2026 and 2030, they can maybe make it oh, no. to no, the no, Final no. Four. Yes, oh. Brian! Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I would, I would add oh. to, to what Pa's saying while, while we all recover. Um, <laughs> Come on, Fonzie. Come on, Fonz. Quickly. Uh, I would add, I would the two things I would add to, to what um Pa said, and, and I think he's 100 percent right. One is uh I think the style that John Herdman and some of the coaches just before him have allowed this team to play with, mm-hmm. allowing players to show their their personalities, their creativity. Like you talk about, let's just do the easy comparison, Canada to the US. Canada has more game breakers and a a lot of that is because of the culture of Canada and the way, you know, the different backgrounds these players come from and the way that they're sort of allowed to play 
the way they see the game, right? Tejon, Fonzie, Jonathan David, Junior Hoylet. And I think that to me is their identity is taking the old, more English backbone style of Canada, mm-hmm. but fusing it with um, this style that you can bring in. And the other is dual internationals. And like, that's not a, that's not <laughs> saying that this is like a quick way to jump the line. All of these players are Canadian raised and Canadian produced and whatever it is. They never wanted to play for Canada because the CSA was a mess. Mm-hmm. The team wasn't very good. You didn't want to go to play Bermuda twice in three and a half years before a World Cup on a bad field. And uh, I think the perception of that has changed a ton, but this World Cup has completed it. They are now in the running for any yes. player who genuinely feels Canadian and wants to play for this team. Because mm-hmm. why would you not play with yeah, this group? And why would you not want to play important. for this yeah. team? And so that'll be ma- that'll be a big, big change in the future for Canada. Not like, oh, can we find players who we didn't know had Canadian passports? Literally, the players who should be playing for yeah. Canada have been choosing to play for other teams. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to say, Paul, when you were talking earlier about Mourinho and African players and how, you know, yep. lineage to yes. African countries, but they're choosing to play for European countries. But that has been the overwhelming yep. plus for, for Canada. You have a guy like Eustachio could have played for Portugal. He chooses to play for Canada. Junior Hoyle could have played for yes. Jamaica, chooses to play for Canada. That's part and parcel to, to John Herdman and, and what he brings and what he has to mm-hmm. offer these guys. But now it's about, they've talked about the legacy so, you know, and back, back yep. to maybe you're overly pessimistic or, or, or too early a question to pose, David Goss, with it, you know, have they accomplished something if they <laughs> scored a goal? We can, we'll get to that post-mortem. But um, I, I think that they, they're inspiring the next generation, right? And so, okay. again, you know, to your point, Pa, about, about the CPL and, and having a homegrown league and homegrown players and academies and MLS and what will what that will do to bolster the development of soccer in Canada, but also the legacy that all these players will leave for the future generations in Canada and these up and coming players is just going to be massive. Hundred percent, and that's what this game is. This game is about inspiring the next generation. This game is to make sure that we continue to grow and develop players that could be at the world stage as we're seeing right now. I'm sitting here with a massively pride looking at two players that I had the pleasure of, first of all, knowing them as people, which is in Sam Adekube and Alfonso Davis, but also being able to play a part and talk to them about these kind of moments that they're witnessing now. And for me, when you see that and they can go on and deliver that on the world stage and help this next generation, is huge. And that's the side that we've seen also with MLS, with the MLS Next Pro, with the MLS Academies. There's such a great emphasis now in North America in the youth development pathway that was not there before. If they could get it on the men's side this right, and you get it on the women's side also. Oh, that's Amy, what we need, point, so that's I think, right? I think, I think, I think it will set, uh, it will set North America apart. Because it's one place right now that can be done in the right way with a great infrastructure and support. It is in North America. Because some of the places in Europe does not have the foundation or the infrastructure that some of these clubs possess here in North America. Yeah, because the success the Canadian women have had is is in spite of um, the resources, oh, yeah. in spite of the federation, in spite exactly. of all of these roadblocks, in spite of being outsourced to all kinds of different... Um, you know, places that have the the money and the resources to develop players. So it, we desperately need something yes. at home to really deepen that player pool in Canada because, you know, Canada's ranked number seven, our, our women are, um, gold medal winning yeah. team at the Olympics, three consecutive podiums, but they've lacked that success at the World Cup. So uh, they, they need to do that. In order to do that, you have to really make that tier two kind of robust and really deepen that player pool. And you have to have a league here at home, have to. I agree with you. And I think also, hopefully, as you know, this is something that CSA can look in and be proud of and, and you know, and digging deep into it, you know, try to try to help the next two to three generations that comes up and see what they have here. Go Fonzie. <laughs> <laughs> He's special. Yeah, this is where I don't, I mean, he, I thought he was a little bit too individualist, individualistic in his attack against mm-hmm. Belgium, maybe trying to do too much after that penalty miss, but go for it here, Fonzie. Go, put the team on your back, get something. 
I, w- I just, I mean, if, if Canada were able to find a goal here and then, I mean, who knows? I just, I would, I would love to be on the stream. The free yellow Amy's, card. Amy's reaction. Magic <laughs> blocks a ball while laying on the ground. Come on, and yes. Ball? Here we go. Come on. This is it. Guys, this is where it all turns around. Talk- Kamal Miller inspired. Yep, I like it. Kamal's like, let's go. I love it. Lay it all out love, there. But, but this is what the team and, and you know, Amy's talking about the women's team. This is what John Herdman brought a lot to the women's side, and but especially on the men's side is like, Kamal Miller is not scared of Luka Modric. He's no. not backing down. And this is a guy who, you know, <laughs> was sitting on the bench for Orlando City two years ago, and now he's an international starting center back. He belongs there, and Go, he's acting that way. Absolutely. And, 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 to, and to, uh, to your point, uh, Dave, I think, I, think, I think you look at him, and I think he's going to become one of the best center backs. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that. Because of, because, because of his courageous, his bravery, and also he's getting better on the, on the, yeah. on the technical side of the game. Which I think um, he likes to take risk, which I love as a center back because <laughs> because that's what I like my center backs to play like. And also he got speed, but the fear factor is something mm. that he does not have. He does not care who when he step on the pitch. He does not care, or he doesn't look for what somebody has done. And he's for him. It's he's the one moment. that I've seen over the last six months as they put together the friendlies and started to play these tier A teams who has taken the biggest yeah. jump of just, he had never seen it before in person mm-hmm. against Uruguay, yeah. the foul in the first five minutes that leads to the goal. Um, a, a couple of mistakes mm-hmm. early on as well. I thought against Bahrain and then into the Japan game into this, and he's played his two best games, the last two games. And so, as you said, Pa, like he's, he's adding to his game, but he's also realizing, I think how good he is. And that's no, he is, and I mean, I watch him. I've I've studied him, and I think CF Montreal put also put him in a spot where he could succeed. And I think uh, Wilfred Nancy also brought uh, something mm-hmm. out of him. And I think also, like when we look at the CF Montreal team this year, we also have to give a lot of credit to Wilfred Nancy. For me, he was my coach yeah. of the year. I love Jim Curtin. I love Jim Curtin because I think Jim Curtin is a phenomenal coach but if you look at the massive jump that cf montel has done in terms of playing style in terms of getting the points for me is wilfred nancy because what he's done with the cf montreal with the canadian players also you know yeah. playing for him it's it's rumored like, to be tremendous. going to columbus crew wilfred nancy mm-hmm. <laughs> yes yeah not mm-hmm. thrilled go go Oh, by the way, but before I it. forget here, do you think Cavallini, before he got subbed into this game, he had to promise to John Herdman if if Canada won a PK that he would not do a Panenka and he would not be the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it went, it went in, Amy. It no, worked. I know. I know. And I love the balls. I love the balls <laughs> to do that. But please don't do that in the World Cup. I mean, I would have loved to see him do it in the World Cup because I don't, I don't know if you remember um, – um, uh, Totti. Yes. The Totti for the uh, Euro 2000. There was a do- there was a documentary about the Italian team. So before he went and uh, did his panenka, he turned to Pirlo and he looked at him. He said, oh. <laughs> so and, "And he did it against uh, Van der Sar in a in a yeah. semifinals." Hell of a player. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Can we say cojones on this show? Um, cojones. <laughs> <laughs> Croatia already said it, so okay. Yeah. They started. They put, we yeah, started the show they put, with, uh, <laughs> they put with a picture of John Herdman. I made the picture on of John Herdman on the front yeah. page of their newspaper, oh. so I think we're good. <sighs> oh. <laughs> yeah, also, I think we might see it with the end of this game if it if it plays out here three one that there might be some chippy fouls, some mm-hmm. foot that gets left in as feedback for. <laughs> on Herman's comments, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that is something that the Canadians would have never done before. Which? Leaving, leaving, you know, yeah. some little tackles here, left and right. Well, fortunately, Richie went off because otherwise he's picking up. A I was going to say, make I home know. with him. 
Just as a just as a souvenir. So then, <laughs> so then here's my question to you guys. How will the Croatian react to John Herdman after the game? I think they'll be classy. I don't uh, think yeah. they just what were you won. gonna say, Susanna? No, I was just gonna say, you know, they just want I don't think, you know, this is I think I think the result is exactly what they, you know, that was that was their their answer. You know, like I don't, I don't think they're gonna rub it in his face anymore. Then I think they'll be classy. That's just my take. Yeah, I think yeah, on the field, off. from the players, yeah. from the coach, it'll be class. But then I think the tabloids will have more fun. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hundred <laughs> percent. I hope. And I they think do. Herdman, and I think Herdman will be fine with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. He his yes, job was to coach his team. He doesn't care about that perception. And you know, I, I think he had plenty of respect and and plenty of worries about this Croatia team. So he knows how good they are. And I don't think the coach of Croatia needs to remind him that they were in a world cup final. I'm pretty sure he watched that game. Yeah. Would be my guess. Um, so a little more nuggets. nuggets. I love pa which nuggets. Coach has, which, which coach has coached both the men and women. Only John Herdman. World cup. I know that one. Here's one for you. When? What coaches at mm. this world cup on the men's side? Uh, have never played at any in any country division one top level professional soccer. Oh, it's thirty two teams, yeah. man. Well, it, that's also John Herdman. <laughs> it is also yeah. John Herdman. Ah, you have to say, but it is not only John Herdman. Wow. There is one other coach. Hmm. One other coach. So Herdman is one of two to have never does he played. Coach in Concacaf. He does not coach in Concacaf. Does he coach in he does Asia? Not coach in Asia. This is going to get easy as we eliminate every federation. <laughs> do you want me to just? Does he do you want me to Af just tell you? Does he coach in? Does he, he does coach, coach in Africa. Because I'm thinking. Ah, then is. Uh, uh, now I'm torn between uh, Tunisia and uh, Morocco. It is Jalel Kadri of Tunisia. Uh -huh. So there yeah, you go. Tunisia. Great nuggets, Good job. guys. Yeah. yeah. You guys narrowed it down eventually. <laughs> <laughs> How to become yeah. a millionaire. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. We've got six minutes. Six so, minutes? Any yeah. question to you? As we, as we saw, uh, maybe given that... Um, there were stretches, big stretches, uh, and the speed was not in for Victoria. Would you have maybe subbed in Joel Waterman? Would, it, would you have been risky to, to make that sub to play him in, knowing that, okay, we need to push for a goal? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think you, I think you take the, the risk is leaving Victoria in and hoping that the, the speed that's supporting him on either side is able to provide the cover. I, I don't, I, I think that would have been a massive risk to put. I mean, I love Joel Waterman and we talked about his ascension from U sports to CPL to yeah. CF Montreal and, and doing so well for them. Oh, yeah. God. Amazing but I don't, rice. I don't think you start he's, him he's, in, in a world cup. He has, he has, he has developed massively. He's, he's, he's watching his growth has been fantastic for the CPL and uh, you know, CPL needed that. Same as with uh, Lucas McNaughton as well, to you know to have him debut this year, and probably somebody maybe coming next year. Uh, both him and Joel Merriman, yeah, together with Kamal, I look at them as the future. Yeah, Canadian you, you project to twenty twenty six, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, yeah. a, a few more friendlies and experience internationally under his belt. Maybe maybe oh, yeah. that's who's starting next, right? Go Sam. Hundred percent. How crazy would have been if Sam mm -hmm. could score? I will never hear that. I will never hear the end. Of his mom, his mom, watching him come off the bench. Amazing. That was brilliant. She's such a wonderful soul, such a wonderful woman, uh, and and his father as well. The whole family is. is oh, no. oh no! Oh no! 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 Come on! I mean, no. Like, Something I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's 4-1. Oh, no. oh, Come on, right. Miller was by himself in the back oh, and he made a mistake and yeah. it let oh. Croatia in two on none. Oh. I hate that. Yeah, that sucks I for him. The score line, really, no. really didn't, really didn't need that one. No. 
Nah, especially for him having a great world yeah. cup where the eyes in That's on him. A... It's, 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 it's. Oh, man. Yeah. That is a tough oh. one. That is a tough one. Because he's had, yeah. for me, he's been one of Canada's best player. Like in both games. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't think that should, you know, change I don't... anything. You know, it's a one-off. It's a mistake. It's it's shitty. Can I say that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? Sure. We're live, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. Sorry, guys, but yeah. I, yeah. Oh, use your foot. Use your it's foot. Stop use your time. Foot. Use yeah. Your foot. No, I. I think. I think that's fair, Amy. Foot. Uh, use your foot. Come on. Unfortunate for you. Well, I mean, silver linings, lessons, lessons to be learned. We're looking ahead, twenty twenty six. I mean, this is. Again, oh, like 100%. I, it this stinks and um, it's it's a huge bummer. But again, I just want to reiterate the fact that this was, I mean, Goss said it. Like this group was essentially the group of death in this World Cup. This was always going to be a huge, huge challenge for Canada. Um, they haven't, you know. I, I think that what they have shown at moments throughout this, and they still have one game left to play for. I know it won't mean anything um, having lost their first two matches. They will not be going on to the group stage, but um, Canada, this was, this was their, their introduction for, for many people to see them um, in this sort of global soccer lens. And I, I don't think that what they put out there was, I think that was a, it, they've left a, a positive impression. Yeah, I think a hundred percent, I would agree. I, I think a lot of people around the world who had never watched Canada play, will come out of this tournament being impressed. I know I've already heard it from a lot of people yeah. coming out of the first game. I don't think that changes, even though the numbers yeah. on this results aren't as good. And I would say sort of what Canada's trying to do is fairly unprecedented. I think back, you know, Ghana got out of the group in 06 after not being in the World Cup for a while and built on it in 2010. Um, Belgium missed two World Cups and came back in 14 and got to the uh, the quarterfinals. But it's pretty out of, you know, it's pretty unprecedented to come from completely out of the World Cup for years on years on years and then come in and, and dominate and make noise and get out of the group. So it's not super surprising, but that was part of the build. Do this this time because you're already in 2026. And I think Canada showed that their players can play at this level for mm -hmm. sure. Less fun. Less no. fun. Than winning. Less fun than winning. That is for sure. Um, but you know, we're all about fun on these watch alongs that we're going to, we're going to try to, uh, to, like I said, find some, find some silver linings because there are, there are plenty, plenty to be found. But um, as this uh, game has hit full-time final score line, Croatia four, Canada one um, after the full 90 minutes guys, um, unfortunately for Canada, after this result, they will not be, Moving on to the knockout rounds of this World Cup, um, losses to Belgium and Croatia. But again, as we as we think about sort of the the bigger picture here, I think that it's fair to say that um, that Canada has left a, a really positive impression in the global soccer sense. Um, there are as we look ahead to 2026, this is there's a lot to be excited about. Um, they are going to be they're going to be a team that people are going to want to watch their brand of soccer is fun. They're building an identity. Um, I don't know. I know that we're all kind of feeling crappy about it now, but Amy, as you, as you, I, okay. Yep. We just had to, had to go to the standings. That's how it all shook out. Look at that. We got to Yeah. Yeah. So after two, after two games, Canada with zero points, which means that they will not advance to the, the knockout rounds, but Amy just kind of, you know, initial initial thoughts after this one. I know you're a proud Canadian, um, and I'm sure I'm sure we're trying to find the positives here, and there are some to yep. be found. So, what are yours? I I think you get that goal, and it comes from your talisman and, mm -hmm. and Alfonso Davies. So, I think that's extremely meaningful. That is a highlight that will be played over and over and over again, despite this result. Um, and I think you can change that goose egg there. Uh, at the beginning or after Canada there. So, you know, they've got one more game left. Mm -hmm. And the way that this group shakes out, especially with Morocco beating Belgium, I mean, maybe Canada goes and, and they surprise. You know, they, they can't get out of their group, but you better believe that this team is going to compete and, and give everything they have in, in that last group game. So I think it... 
I'm just feeling really deflated and, and kind of emotional right now. Um, <laughs> imagine what those guys are, are feeling themselves, but I don't, I don't think they really have anything to, they don't have anything to apologize for. I don't think they, they let anybody down with their performance. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was the, the really high flying energetic performance that surprised Belgium. I think that you have to give a lot of credit to Croatia. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, just just massively disappointed for for those guys and for John Herdman um, and for the country because I think they on on Thursday afternoon I think there was about close to four million people that watched yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine yeah. on a Sunday morning that that's got to be at least doubled, if not more. Yep, I could say optimistically, um, unlike David Goss, whose glass is half empty. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm disappointed. But I think you know they get that first goal. That that's something that that no one can ever take away from them. Absolutely, history was made. That was their their first ever goal in a in a World Cup, um, scored by Alfonso Davies after tremendous service from from Tejan Buchanan. I love that it was Alfonso Davies um, that scored that as well. Feels kind of poetic. Um, a guy who has sort of become the face of this. Canadian men's national team. As we try to keep things light and and positive here, Pa, what are what are your initial takeaways from from you know this game? But then also, um, you know, what Canada has shown the world um, in this World Cup. Uh, I, I took away three moments. One of them, did Canada seize the moment? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. They truly seized the moment. Did they believe? Yes. Canada believed, the whole nation of Canada believed, which is two vital things yeah. to have when you are in your first ever World Cup, right? They truly seized the moment. They truly showed that they belong. They truly showed that we are here. We can play this game. And secondly, not only did the country believe, but the rest of the world believed what Canada is capable of. And now the third one for me is the experience. The experience that they have gained from this World Cup and everything around the World Cup to bring it in 2026, we are going to see a different Canada, a more mature Canada, maybe a younger Canada in certain positions that is needed because we could see into this game that those positions that it's very much vital in the game of football, speed, dynamic was lacking. And it was great to see Ismail Akone play a second half uh, also so the younger generation that is going to come up and be ready in four years' time, we are going to see a different Canada. But they seize the moment, and we can be proud of what Canada has done. Now let's put our hopes into the U.S. But Canada definitely can be proud. For me, as a coach, started my coaching in Canada for the mm -hmm. past two years to see what has grown into the country. Um, having my daughters uh, born in Canada, I feel Canadian, and I feel proud enough to say it because... They've surprised, but they seized the moment. And that's something that, in my mind, that is something the players also will recognize because when they come back, they should get a welcome, uh, uh, hero's welcome because what they've done for the country and what they're going to continue to do for the country. And hopefully uh, the CPL uh, get a boost from this, but also the MLS as well. Love it. Goss. What are your what are your thoughts? I know this was yeah, <laughs> you were you were a ball of nerves heading into this one. Yeah. I know it's a it's 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 a letdown, but where's your head at right now? Listen, we'd rather love and lose than never love at all, right? <laughs> oh, that's so, so uh, beautiful. It, uh, my wife does not think that's very funny. Standing right there. Uh, no, it's listen. This team this team has been electric for four years now, mm -hmm. and at a time when a country needed something to rally behind. And personally, for me, like. I, one of the, you know, I've watched the sport grow in Canada for a while and I've been going up to Canada to cover things for a while. So I've always seen this coming and, and felt it was around the corner, but just like it, it's been fun and it's been a breath of fresh air to see people like Alfonso Davies and Jonathan Osorio and Tejan Buchanan accomplish the things they believe they could against mm -hmm. a, a ton of odds. And they're the type of people you want to root for in the world. We don't have a lot of those all of the time. So I think that's really special. And one of the things I've talked about and I've been learning about because I'm not Canadian, um, but it's just this sport allows you to elevate people like that, where maybe an Alfonso Davies coming from a refugee camp to Canada wouldn't be the face of the nation and be able to help inspire people or push people, whatever it is. And so the sport gives you that. And that's why soccer matters, I think. And, and that's why it's really special to see it happen 
uh, for Canada and in Canada. And this was fun for two games. Yeah, mm -hmm. the scoreline sucks. And what Kamal Miller is going to have to go back and watch after this game, that's going to suck. And, you know, it's unfortunate for Atiba that at 39, it sort of fell apart for him coming off an injury in one of these big games. But they've been in both these games. They've shown who they are. Mm -hmm. They've been fun. I, if you and what I tried to bring up, which I'm happy you got <laughs> shut down when you did. If you bring out, bring out expectations the rubric from two weeks ago, from a month ago, from five months ago, from six months ago, of what do you want Canada to accomplish at this World Cup? They've done so. Yeah, they scored. They showed they belonged. Their players put their best foot forward. Canada soccer matters in Canada now, and it's known globally. So they've accomplished all of that. It's unfortunate with the way the group falls that they're already out going into the third game. But yeah. go and win it. Don't go and open up and play silly. They're go and play your soccer and go win that game. And I don't get your think first they will. World Cup win. And I don't think they will. I don't think they will. And I again, I mean, like guys, Croatia. Croatia was the runner up in in 2018. Like this is a, this is. A, I mean, they've got Luka Modric I mean, on their roster, who is still playing at a ridiculously high level. This is a Ballon d'Or winner. Um, yeah, there is there is absolutely no shame. And I just think, you know, I liked the conversation we had earlier about sort of like building an identity um, within this like sort of like global soccer lens and what people are going to think about when they think about this, this Canada team, especially as we look ahead to 2026. And I will tell you, like, even like throughout qualifying, like I loved watching this team. This is one of the the most fun teams to watch. They are exciting. Um, they can beat you in different ways. There's different things that they're they're good at. And I just think that it, it bodes very, very well um, for what we are inevitably going to see at the World Cup in, in 2026. And I think that for all those reasons too, like this, this, yes, this last game, okay, it might not mean much in terms of you know what they're going to do for in the world cup because they're already they're already technically out but you know there is pride on the line and for me one of the things i love about this team and amy i see you shaking your head like they're not gonna they're not gonna roll over like they are going to want to to play as hard as they possibly can against a very very good morocco team um and and get a result, you know, and like leave a, leave a really positive impression. And I think that's what we will probably see. Is it Thursday that they play? What day is it? When do they play? Maybe, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Against Whatever Morocco. What do you, how, what do you think the, the mentality of the players are having? I know it's so disappointing, but you head into that, like where, where are they at? What do you think we'll see from them on Thursday? I think it's the same attitude that they come into that game against Belgium where they have nothing to lose, right? But everything mm -hmm. to prove. So I think you you can't get out of your group, but you still you still make noise. You still go into that game looking to to change minds and to divide to defy expectations and to go back to the conversation we were having. Like I don't think they were able to replicate that the defensive performance that they had against Belgium, against Croatia. You, yeah. you saw the fatigue, you saw, you know, that that Damn you, Doyle. It became, you know, it was, really, it was really something that they had to reckon with. And I don't know if, it, you know, Herdman and, could be criticized for, for leaving um, Atiba in as long as he did. You know, there. Well, also, Amy, I think we have to then, at some point, and I don't think it's the first conversation that has to happen, you have to question a bit the tactical setup, right? To only play two center mids, to, to pull Alistair out a little bit wider. They opened themselves up and exposed themselves. So whether the energy was there or not, they took risks in the way they set up in this game, and I don't think he helped yeah. Atiba and Ustakio. Yeah, but but I, I see your point, but I, I think that's how this team has gained yes. fans, and that's also how they've found success is because they've yeah. taken risks, both individually but also as a collective. But um, I was going to say, just to finish up, we were talking about, you know, you brought up the point of John Herman talking about Tier 1 sides and how Canada has to continually test themselves against those types of countries. And I think teams will be lining up to play Canada now for mm -hmm. friendlies. That mm -hmm. will only help them in the future. And then tier one players, you know, you compare like a Croatia to Canada, maybe we have five or six guys. And again, you know, how are you, what are the semantics behind that? Like, how are you defining what a tier one player is? But I mean, I think more eyes on these guys, mm -hmm. more you go to the top five leagues, you know, you, you shore up and you bolster that, that tier two, uh, development in Canada and you just keep producing more and more players. Um, so until Canada is sort of on par with it, with the giants in the game. So I think it's a, it's a really good positive stepping stone um, for Canada, despite already being eliminated. 
I love it. I think um, I think we're all kind of on the on the same page here. I'll give um, Paul give you an, a chance to say any final thoughts before we kind of wrap things up. But um, you know, as you as look ahead to this game against Morocco, and you know what you hope to see, like what how we kind of like close out the World Cup for Canada. What do you what do you think we'll see from from this side? They can still uh, yeah. play spoiler. They yeah. can still be the spoiler in this group because the group is still wide open. So, again, it just goes back to, you know, uh, you have three games. Okay, you're out. But still, can you put a performance that is worthy of you for the players and for the country? And I think that they will do it again because... Um, and we will also maybe get to see players that haven't so far featured in this uh, World Cup. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I hope that uh, John Herdman will give those guys a run because they deserve it as well, you know, being coming in this stage, you know, even to get minutes on. I think it will be massive for those players, for the experience. But again, we're talking about a group of death where two were the two last semi-finalists in the 2018. Who has a Ballon d'Or in one of their team, who has one of the best midfielders that have been mm -hmm. playing for the last past uh, six, seven, eight in the... In, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, you have players that are playing for Chelsea. So to see what Canada has done is something to be proud of. And the lesson to be taken is let's get ready for 2026 World Cup. And then let's show what we can do in our own country. And for the nation of Canada, now start and show respect to what your national team in soccer has done. The talks in Canada should never be again, we can't or we don't know how to do it. Everybody showing how to do it. CSA, stand behind CP, uh, CPL, stand behind any province that is looking to grow this game of soccer in Canada. Canada needs it. You have one of the greatest young players playing for the biggest team in Europe. There's no more excuses. Let's stand behind the Canadian soccer and let's bring this forward. Ah, let's go, mm. let's go, Coach Pa. Oh my gosh, I'm Goose ready. Pumps. I'm ready, I'm ready. Goss, are you ready? Should we? <laughs> I, I am very ready. Listen, <laughs> based off what just happened, I think I'm ready to fast forward four years and just I do it all over sorry, again. Sorry. Um, but Use but, my know, internet, not pause. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if we do pause, then I got to rewatch 2018 and Kuva all over again. So that's a whole experience. But what we've talked about all the time and, and what Pa's saying, right? And, and even more exciting is you have so many young players on this team who are going to be there in four years, but... I promise you, we don't know all the names. Like yeah, there are yeah. better players coming through. We didn't know Ismail Kone oh, a year ago. No. no one knew Kamal Miller and Alistair Johnston were international level players, um, except maybe them and their families. So it, there, there's so much talent. There's so much more opportunity now uh, with the leagues, with the way Montreal has set themselves up. You know, they are a massive part of this team being successful. TFC needs to pick it up because the Toronto area is the talent base and all these players came from the six, but they didn't come through mm -hmm. TFC. And you've got Vancouver as well, who are doing some really strong things yep. on the Academy side and have some special players. They've already sold players to Europe who haven't even debuted at the first team level. So there's excitement, there's energy, there's talent. Um, just it, it's about entrusting the right people to lead it forward. And I think John Herdman's the start of that. Uh, and I think there, there's more people who have deep roots in Canada who can help this thing. And, I'm hoping, as Pa said, support those people and help them push it forward. Amazing. Um, yeah, and it, I, I don't think you can overemphasize, too, just the experience, right? Like, you know, they've been, they have now, they've, they've been, these are young players that have now played in a World Cup, and that is going to be so valuable come four years from now, um, mm -hmm. having been there, knowing what that feels like, knowing what it's like to play on the, the world's biggest stage. Um, this is, you know, like, yeah, it, we've got a few years to wait, but I think it's all going to be, well worth it for uh, for Team Canada and uh, all the Canadian supporters that, by the way, can we just give some love to all the Canadian fans that showed up in Qatar? They were like some of the most fun, like the fun, I was, mm -hmm. they are having the time of their lives. And I was like, I want to sit with them. They look like they're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, we had, we also had the requisite ben? Mountie fans. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Incredible. But also, also them and oh, the Japanese God. fans, because the Japanese fans are showing us also live right? values. That we yes, cleaning up after everybody, and right? I think that, 
and that's Incredible. what football is it's about. It's called the beautiful game for a that reason, everybody. And that... <laughs> exactly. So let's give also a shout out to the Japanese fans. They are class. Sheer they are class. class Love it. Love it. Um, guys, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, Amy, Pa, Goss, such a pleasure hanging out with all of you. I know it was not the result that we wanted, but um, I'm glad that I had some compadres um, with me to, you know, just kind of talk us through, talk us through the emotions of all of this. Um, but we're not done for our um, our coverage today. Goss and Bobby Warshaw, um, every single match day have you covered um, with Club and Country today on Twitter Spaces at 5 p.m. Eastern. So you definitely want to check that out. Um, and then next Tuesday at 1.45 p.m. Eastern time um, on all MLS channels, we're going to be doing another one of these watch alongs as uh, the USA face off against Iran, a game that if uh, either they win, win and you're wow. winning, you're in, win and you advance. So um, it's super, super stoked for that. That is going to be so much fun. But yeah, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for all the uh, comments on Twitch and YouTube. Enjoy the rest of your um, your soccer viewing today. And yeah, we will see you guys shortly. Thanks, guys. Peace out. Thank you.